Thank you, everybody. All right, uh, we're going to start the meeting tonight with a presentation from uh, Barley Dunn. Good evening, thanks for having me. Um, I guess I'm here to talk about a possible oyster gardening project in Hog Creek. So I was just gonna go talk about gardening in general and then maybe we'll talk about the project in Hog Creek. I don't wanna take up a lot of your time because you got a pretty full agenda. So quick, let me just use this. Well, first of all, what, I think I'm preaching to the choir here quite a bit, but why do we want an oyster garden? Well, part of the oyster gardening program is to enrich stewards of the marine environment. People that are, people that are interested in oyster gardening are already stewards of the marine environment, so hopefully uh, with some oyster gardening that they, they, can get, they can enrich their stewardship by learning more and getting out on the water. Uh, they can en enhance local shellfish stocks. The oysters that we grow, they actually reach sexual maturity within the first year. So as we're growing them, they'll spawn and hopefully produce a, a natural stock. Uh, again, more on the stewardship, sort of marine and estuarine education aspect of it. And we all know about oysters and their inherent ecological qualities. They're filter feeders, they're pr providing habitat, creating habitat. Um, and just to get, you know, get folks outside into the water, on the water. So some of the particulars of oyster gardening, the state has some rules that we need to follow. They're pretty simple. Basically, each gardener is limited to 1,000 oysters each and five bags each. Um, the town would acquire the permit, which makes it easier. Uh, the DEC appreciates that. Otherwise, they would have a bunch of individuals applying for permits and keeping track of where all the, or the, all the gardens are is difficult. So they, we would just apply for a per one permit in one location, and that's done. That's re really pretty easy. Priority goes to East Hampton residents, and uh, we've got plenty of people interested, so it shouldn't be hard fulfilling that. And basically, the cost is about $250 a member, and everything's included, and they'll get their 1,000 oysters, all the gear that they need, all the instruction. So that's, this is a picture of last year's program that went very well. So basically our schedule consists of, uh, we start off with lectures because we wanna, we wanna teach people some of the basics, you know, so they know what they're working with. Um, you don't go out and get a dog or a cat without knowing the basics of dogs and cats, so we wanna <laughs> teach people the basics of how to grow oysters, go over the biology, how we, sp how we spawn them and create them at the hatchery um, with a lecture at the hatchery, and then we'll go through spawning and hatchery culture at the hatchery. Basically, we have a lecture or some sort of meeting uh, once about every month starting, hoping to get started next month for this year. And then we'll go over proper handling and some of the diseases and stuff, <coughs> predators, pests, all that kind of stuff you need to worry about. And uh, we'll do a history of New York shellfish talk. Hopefully, we'll have a, a guest speaker, Kim Tetro from Cornell Cooperative, who runs the SPAT program that this is modeled off of. Uh, hopefully I can get him down. He's a really excellent speaker and history of New York shellfish is really interesting. If anybody's read uh, The Big Oyster by Mark Kurlansky, it's a really interesting story. Um, and we'll do a party, hopefully, at Bay Kitchen Bar and a tentative date for that is June 3rd. Um, I think that might be Yeah, oh, one more. So after all the lectures and everybody gets schooled up on oyster culture, then we, we go to the garden. Everybody gets their seed around about July sometime. Stock them in the grow out bags. We have these uh, oyster grow units. They're basically floating cages. And inside each cage fits four bags. Um, you can see some of these, the cages are up out of the water, so they're kind of in the drying mode. And some of these where the floats are up, those are actually cages with oysters in them. So these things are really nice because uh, they can be handled by one person, and they can be flipped over, and we can access the, the uh, oyster bags or, or, and dry them out, and then just flip them right over so the oysters are submerged right at the top of the water where most of the food is. It's warmer. That's where the food is, and they grow nice and quick. 
very quickly and they, uh, they uh, stay spread out in those bags due to the natural rocking motion. And we get that nice southwesterly coming up there in three mile, spreads things out. Um, and then we'll go, we'll do like a, a, a bi or tri-weekly maintenance with this grow out just to, to uh, size grade the oysters and keep the bags clean. And then in October, which comes pretty quickly, we'll get them ready for, for winter, just sink everything. And then, uh, so right now, all, the, all of last year's oyster gardeners, oysters are floating off the dock at Three Mile Harbor. And then we'll retrieve those probably April or May, depending on weather, and then just start the growing process all over again. So that's kind of how it works in a nutshell. Um, Rick approached me a while back about trying to get a a uh, similar program going in Hog Creek. So that's why I'm here tonight. Um, hopefully to answer some questions and go over some more specifics. So. Right, maybe, maybe I could provide a little background, yeah. Marley. Um, I had some meetings with members of the Hog Creek community last year. There was some interest in stewardship and also to explore how to possibly better manage dredging in the entrance to Hog Creek and one of the offshoots of those discussions was the potential oyster garden. And at that time, I reached out to Barley and had the opportunity to speak with Alex Miller, who is one of the current gardeners in the Three Mile Harbor project, project and he expressed some interest in taking some leadership in starting a program in Hog Creek. So it was a great opportunity to bring members of the Hog Creek community together with the Aquaculture Department and explore how we might get a, another garden going in, in town and hopefully continue and get more gardens going in, in other harbors mm -hmm. uh, throughout the community. So, you know, thanks very much for, for coming and sharing the information about the, the garden. I believe Alex Miller is yes, here yes. tonight. Uh, Alex? Yes. Are, are you uh, available to maybe give a little update on where you're at with the community and the interest that may uh, be okay. uh, available at this time. Would you like to talk now or, uh, yeah, that would be great. I think if we could bring tie this all together, it would be great. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time. I, I'm Alex Miller. I um, I'm a community resident of uh, Lionhead Beach, and I also serve on the uh, the association board as VP. But I'm here as a private citizen, not speaking for either Lionhead or for Clearwater. But as a participant in, uh, in our town's first uh, oyster gardening program, uh, I'm also a licensed shellfisher, and I found uh, my experience in this past year to be one of the most exciting and just wonderful uh, programs that, uh, that I've ever been involved in. Uh, and uh, our 1,000 uh, spat, uh, which are now larger than that, but uh, probably an inch and a half size, are now resting comfortably over the winter on uh, Gann Road and uh, look forward to the kickoff of the, uh, the season ahead. Um, I'm advocating here uh, tonight for the expansion of the program, the continuance of the program, and the expansion of the program into Hog Creek. Hog Creek is a tributary that is uh, shared, if you will, by two communities, uh, Lionhead Beach and uh, Clearwater Beach. Um, and it uh, empties into, through an inlet that's shared by these two communities, uh, into Gardner's Bay. Um, the town, through the Community Preservation Program, has been uh, quite uh, assertive in uh, acquiring properties uh, along Hog Creek and uh, in some instances uh, um, taking down the, uh, the homes that whose septic systems had been uh, previously built in wetland areas uh, to help restore uh, the quality of the water and uh, the uh, diversity uh, of uh, life within Hog Creek. Um, I moved to that area 10 years ago, but uh, I've been visiting the area, uh, the Hog Creek area and that part of the bay since the mid-1970s, and I've noticed the degradation of the, the quality of the water and, and uh, really just the, the, even the visual changes, not, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not even talking about the, the chemical and biological and ecological changes uh, to the detriment of diversity and water quality. 
And so um, I'm excited that uh, the trustees have entertained any of the meetings that I've called with you uh, and uh, excited about the possibility of uh, not only continuing the oyster gardening program, but expanding it uh, into other waterways. Um, when I uh, told my friends and family and uh, uh, coworkers, pretty much anyone that uh, 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 would uh, listen to me and my excitement about, uh, uh, about uh, the oyster gardening program and, and what it uh, entails, uh, I found a great deal of enthusiasm uh, from just you know, every person who said, uh, uh, dozens of persons who have told me, if this goes on a second year, you got to tell me about it because I want to sign up and I want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, that led me to uh, reach uh, across the creek, if you will, and meet with members of the board at uh, Clearwater Association and uh, ask about uh, their thoughts on the matter and whether they would advocate also. Uh, and as Barley had asked me just moments ago, you know, is there interest? There's a great deal of interest. I, I think that if we, uh, if we hung out notice, uh, you know, tonight, I think by the end of the week, uh, we'd have another 15 participants uh, quite easily. Um, so I, um, uh, you know, I'm here at uh, your service. If you're, if the town, uh, the trustees, and uh, the shellfish uh, uh, program uh, continues in the year ahead, and if Hog Creek is uh, under consideration, uh, I offer uh, any uh, work that I can apply to make that a reality uh, happen for the year ahead. Thank you, Alex. It's great to hear. Thank you, I mean, I'll just the start update. this off by saying that, you know, when we started this last year and when Barley came to us last year with the idea for Three Mile Harbor, you know, we decided that if it was successful and popular, we'd expand it and do it again, and it's been wildly successful. So, I mean, I, for one, am really excited to see this expand into Hog Creek and into Akabonic in the future. Thank you. Um, thank you for your time. Okay, Alex, thank you. We'll, we'll, may, we may have some follow-up questions if you can hang around for a little bit. Okay. okay. Wow. So, do you have any uh, site proposals at all? Um, particular portions of Hog Creek. Where yeah, I was, work. I, did, I was speaking to Peter Van Skoyak, and he said we should probably use some of those CPF properties as an access point. Mm -hmm. So we should probably sit down and look at those and, and where they are in relation to certified areas. Right. And come up with the Great. spot that's not going to be conflicting with anyone else. Great. We, we have a couple of members who aren't here tonight, and I think it would be appropriate for the other board members to get a chance to digest this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sure. I think we would probably look to revisit it at the next meeting okay. and try and get it, get it to a vote. And if there are any questions, would you be available for board members to reach out to you yeah, absolutely. Uh, during the next two weeks? Yep, no problem. Email, phone, anyone. I would just right. like to say that before I would actually vote on uh, Garden in Hog Creek, I went on a confirmation from the town board that those properties are available so that your program can incorporate all residents of East Hampton and not just those who are specifically adjacent to Hawk Creek, because right. we know there's limited public access in there. So that would be important to me, personally. Um, and then going forward, I know, um, you know, I am supportive of the gardens on the one side. Um, I understand all the environmental um, benefits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's always been a part of me that weighs that a little bit with right. the um, private to privatizing of the public bottomlands. I want to just weigh that with mm -hmm. how much land ultimately is being utilized by individuals sure. as opposed Definitely. to the public. <laughs> and then thirdly, just going forward to anticipate what type of, if this continues to grow, what type of economic impact that might have on your baymen who are relying on the harvest of shellfish right. you know, for their livelihood. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the long-term, maybe. Well, I think the questions. fact that half half of what they grow goes back out. Yes. For anybody to take, so anybody to take. But so are we, the are we have to, to determine take. where they're going? Are they surviving once they're like we all know? There's going to be some level mm -hmm. of spawning, and you know that's a great thing. We we've learned that through our scallop um, program. Uh, but let's you know think about 
if half of the thousand are being released back in the water of that half, how many actually then are reach a maturity level that they are harvestable? Mm -hmm. How many might be subject to predation or wind up in uncertified waters or whatever, whatever. So just those are just yeah. you know questions out that's, there. Yeah, that's what that. I mean by user yeah. conflict to make sure that we're not, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see yeah. some, of the local, some of the local baymen are here tonight, if anyone would mm -hmm. care to comment at this time or weigh in later on. Would, would you like to come up to the podium, please? Come on up, then, yeah. That'd be great. Uh, Cornell uh, Cooperative over in uh, Southhold, they have a very good program uh, that was uh, introduced as SPAT, Southhold Project in uh, Aquaculture Training. And um, anybody really wants to get, you know, all the knowledge they need to grow any shellfish at all, I recommend that program, and you could call there uh, anytime during business hours and talk to Greg Rivara. I believe he's still in charge of that program over there. But they actually have classes, so you could uh, send people over there, and they could get a hands-on experience from start to finish. Great. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, education is a huge part of this. We definitely want to see as many people get educated and involved. So. Yeah, I hope we can find a way to, you know, make it <coughs> accessible to the whole community to participate. Good evening, Ed McCloskey, commercial fisherman. Um, I really agree with everything everybody's doing, you know, with the shellfish hatcheries and everything. It's, it's great. It's a perfect thing. I really feel that we need to address the problem at the head of what it is. And it's obviously the water quality, right? Mm -hmm. What yeah. is being done for the water quality? Right. I talked to my elders, and they say, you know, Three Mile Harbor back in the day, you, could, you couldn't even see sand. There'd be seaweed and crabs and everything all over. And today, it's just a barren oasis. Yeah. You know, it's barren. There's nothing there. Yeah, it's been so in order to fix the problem, instead of what you're doing, which is a great thing, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. we have to start higher you know, and work down. You need to fix the water quality, you know, because it makes no sense to do what you're doing if it's not gonna sus not be sustainable. It's a, gr it's a great point, thank you. Thank you. We, we are trying. Yeah. The, the problem's, you know, holistic, and there's so many compounding factors and so many things that have built up over so long, and I mean, there's so many efforts we're making now, um, but we have to address, I think, like you're saying, I think what you're getting at is the upland properties are a lot of where the source of the pollution comes from that affects our water bodies and has been affecting it for so long. So, yeah, it takes sort of a cooperative approach to, to address that. And, you know, we're working, we're working hard here. Yeah. Right, there, right. There are studies going on. <laughs> sure. Yeah. There, there are. We could do what <laughs> sure. There, there are several things going on with respect to water testing, which has identified a lot of the sources of the problems. And there are several initiatives, including septic system updates, uh, permeable barriers at key entry points into the harbor. One is being discussed for the head of Three Mile Harbor currently, and I think is in the planning stage. So there are, there are numerous projects, and um, it would probably be great to put together a summary of them, and we could maybe speak about them further at an upcoming meeting. Uh, Sarah, who's here this evening, Sarah Davison from the Friends of Georgica, has been very heavily involved specifically in Georgica Pond, and I think that's going to be a key project to look at and then take a lot of that work and replicate it to other water bodies. Have you guys, uh, did anybody have any um, visual or, or hear saying of Georgia Pond, the last storm we had? <coughs> I work up in Georgia Pond a little bit myself. And the day after the storm, for miles around Georgia Pond itself, it smelled like a septic. It was so, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, yeah, it was so high for a long I time. Just yeah. Right. Well, Fortunately, it's not septic. Yeah. It's septic. Low tide. Suffolk, Suffolk County did uh, approve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it? yeah. No. Suffolk County recently approved new septic systems that are going to help remove nitrogen from all the effluent. So th there's a big push, and now with the CPF fund uh, allocating 20 percent <clears throat> of all the CPF monies to water quality, we're going to start to see some change. But but it is going to be slow. You know, I'm hoping it's in my lifetime that we see it, but yeah. we're starting to move. Right, that's right, yeah. So, and we, we got to keep the ball moving. 
Well, we've got to keep we've got to keep some shellfish in our waters. We've got to keep trying, you know. Yeah. So we're trying to we're trying to hit it on a lot of angles. Yeah. But I'd I'd love to have another you know more meaningful discussion with you and you know work towards providing an update that everyone can really understand and see we put, where we're trying to we go. We should put together a water quality meeting just like because there's a, there's a lot of things going on. It all works together. Putting shellfish in the water actually helps clean up the water. Um, we're trying to gather all these baseline data. This, this project's going on in Georgica Pond. We want to reopen the culvert into Akbonic. There's, there's a lot of things going on. They're all going on simultaneously, and we're, we're pushing. Um, we're yeah, one so one a thing meeting, is a meeting, a meeting key uh, to water quality. I share your concerns. Yeah. We, we do have a presentation from Dr. Gobler of Stony Brook University, which will probably be in early March. Uh, that will be publicly noticed. He, he's a great speaker. He can really provide a scientific view of all the studying that's been done and where we can have the most bang for our efforts. What so I think would be interesting is for us to chart each, each harbor and have you contribute to it. But we know in each harbor what we know, and you probably can add to it. Like Napeg, for one thing, the water's getting warmer and the, eel, the um, eelgrass dies. And the winter flounder dies. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And we have uh, gone to the DEC and asked them, close off this channel and open up that one because that brought colder air in. Barley, aren't you finding in aquaculture that some of your seeds don't make it quite as well as they used to when you were in a, in a uh, colder environment at Lazy Point? Well, it's, the growth is definitely down mostly because of the east inlet being closed up. Right. Uh, oysters seem to be doing, oysters can pretty much pump their own water. So yeah. growth is good with oysters, but the clams are definitely suffering. On the, on and we're also the talking about the, uh, the grasses, too. Well, oysters have a lot of water filters, right. so they filter out a lot. But if we could chart every one of these, and you guys yeah. could add to it, that's, that'd be great. And you hit on one of the big issues there, which is, you know, the animals and plants are connected. You have, you know, you had this huge bed of eelgrass in Three Mile Harbor where you could walk across the eelgrass, it was so thick, and, and you lose the eelgrass, then the animals go too, they don't have the habitat. Then when the animals aren't there providing the shells and stuff that make the nice substrate and all that, I mean, you're losing the plant life too. So it's kind of like we've lost both and, you know, how do we get, we can't get one back with the gun, the other one back, so you have to kind of make efforts to do the eelgrass and the shellfish and all these things. So if we can find ways to just integrate these things, but yeah. The efforts might be directed in the wrong direction. I got you. Yeah, instead of focusing on the water, like right. But we only have yeah. jurisdiction over the water, you know, so yeah. But I think we share your frustration, and, and one of the most frustrating things being on this board, honestly, is is you know ha having our jurisdiction be the water bodies, having them be impaired, and a lot of the impairment is caused <coughs> by things outside of our control on the upland properties that the town board has the control over, and we don't actually have the jurisdiction over, so. We, we can only really focus on what we have jurisdiction on and try to work with other boards to, to address the other upland issues. Okay. Um, we should come up if you want to yeah, talk more. Yeah, Sorry. This, this conversation is not benefiting anybody at home <laughs> watching because they can't hear you. So we'd love to carry on the conversation, but please come to the podium. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. Bruce and Jim, you're here to talk about your projects, right? Well, I was going to talk about the, I have two things on Fragmites, but also about the cove, about the excavation. Hmm. Okay. That, that sort of follows on what we're saying right now, just a quick update on that. Okay. Jim, would you mind these other people skipping ahead of you? You know what that feels um, like okay. is. Could we talk to Barley about his request to utilize our funds before he goes? Sure. He needs to use the agriculture lines. I like, before yeah. you have to go, Barley, we could... And then we can jump to the other guys. And okay. Yeah. Because I know this is something in the past. Um, we have $5,000 in a mariculture line. And when the trustees themselves don't have a transplant project or anything going on, we've allowed uh, the shellfish hatchery to utilize it to get equipment and stuff like that. So Barley's made that request, and he's submitted a couple different um, invoices or prices, proposals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But basically, I have no objection to utilizing the monies in that line for the equipment that the hatchery no, needs. No, neither do I. Yeah. So. Second. Yeah, we have a motion? 
Motion. You're making a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, second. second. Yep. Second attempt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, so Aye. Just Thank get you. Those POs great. ready. Okay, yeah, thanks. That'd be great. Thank you, Barth. Anything mm -hmm. now? Okay. okay, so Bruce. One of the things I wanted to talk about is just to follow up to the conversation we're having now in terms of other things that are being done to try to improve water quality, and specifically about the excavation, proposed excavation of the uh, northeast bottleneck within Georgica Cove. Uh, and Rick and I spoke earlier. The, the issue is that, you know, there's been a plan now to do that excavation. DEC was, uh, came back to us after the first submittal, said that they wanted some things changed, some other things explained. And at this point, we have a report from Drew Bennett that explains and sort of justifies why we picked that design, showing that it is, in fact, a minimum amount that's needed in order to increase water circulation, particularly tidal flushing up into the northern part of that cove. The question, I guess, uh, the reason I wanted to talk for a minute to the board tonight is because DEC raised the issue of specifically what type of dredging do we want to do there? Because we've been talking about what we had proposed was to go in with some low ground pressure pieces of equipment and pick up the material and then carry it back up to uh, the village property and, and remove it from there, dewater it, remove it from there. But then the other possibility of using some sort of hydraulic dredge came up. And then uh, I guess what I'm looking for is sort of an update on whether or not anything has been found out about the feasibility of doing that and how you want me to proceed. The rest of the uh, the application package is ready to go back to DC or will be within you know a day or two, but we do make, need to make a decision about that. That dredge has to be one of uh, that small model that we saw in a, a previous meeting, and I'm not sure we know of another um, source for that equipment. Uh, Sarah, you spoke to a dredging company recently. Um, larger. It's a larger piece. Yeah. yeah. So until we can, you know, find. <laughs> A vendor who has has that equipment, um, I think, was stuck with what you had originally proposed. If I recall, we all went up to a meeting there, and they wanted one specific proposal, right? They did. Yeah. So we should probably stick with the one. Is that the you see? We yeah. I, I read Mr. You know the. That's ten thousand cubic yards. That are going no, to no, we're more. talking about at this point. It's down to about three hundred fifty, a little bit less than three hundred fifty cubic yards. It's the bottleneck. It's the bottleneck. The bottleneck. That's it. At the end it's of the, the bottleneck. Thing. It's not the. It's big not the big dredging thing. It's a smaller project. Um, by Cove Hollow Road. I know yeah. Jim was researching no, I, I know that you dredge, know. and I think he's due back next week. So well, can you give us a week to? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing okay. this application for the trustees. So I'll yeah. have as long as you want on it. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Jim. Okay. Right. I'll just hold off on all the okay. other pieces ready to go, and we'll hold off on that till then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. But the, the engineer's report kind of contradicts everything they set up at that meeting. It really does. In fact, <laughs> I, I went back to Drew because he had produced, uh, with the trustees now have a copy of that report, he produced a report that took a look at the overall, I guess a couple of terms I'm not that familiar with, but you know, looks at the retention time of the water up past north of the, of the bottleneck, and then looked at how quickly that water is flowing back out. But currently, the channel depth is such that even when the gut is open, you're not getting tidal influence into that very northern yeah. section. And that's so it's not even a question of slowing down. You're just not getting so salt water up. You're getting drainage out, but you're not getting. You want to create it, I guess. Right. Yeah. So then, so initially, their response was that we were proposing to do more much, than we needed yeah. to, but the reality is that we're doing a minimum. Right. So we'll. Right. A minimum meaning that. We can't do less than this and have any uh, hope to accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing what they propose would be useless. I'm not going to comment okay, on that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you say that louder. I didn't say that louder. <laughs> Anybody you know, else I, have I think they don't take, the DEC yeah. doesn't give enough uh, benefit to local knowledge. I thought it was completely reasonable that they asked us to come up with no, sort of yeah. the engineering scientific side of why we were designing it that way. Mm -hmm. Made sense and the numbers backed us up. Okay, so you can, I guess we, so Jim should be back in a week and we have another meeting, what, on the 13th? Mm -hmm. On the 13th, so we can perhaps approve it and send. 
send correspondence or what, what do you want us to do? Well, as soon as Jim's back, I guess what we need to do is figure out whether or not it really is uh, feasible, whether or not the, the to, we to want to consider a different option. If we yeah. do, then we need, all you have to do is sort of tell me that and get me pointed in the right direction. I'll do the research and come back to you right. on what I find. If a decision is that it's just not practical to go that route, then I'm ready to go with the, the other. Okay. Excellent. Okay. 350 cubic yards, which a long range excavator sounds like a piece of cake job. Hydraulically, it sounds like it's going to be more work. Yeah, you know? You're just setting up and everything. The yeah. numbers aren't big enough. Yeah. Except the excavator is yeah. going to right. cause more damage it's in the, getting in. the area. The thing about the hydraulic, it just. Yeah, they lay yeah. down wood. It's not a lot. Yeah. A lot of, not a lot of material. But you got you to gotta travel a long ways to get there. That's kind of where it is, you know, from, from the road end. Yeah. You, you have to get it down there. All right, so we'll, to be continued, I guess, right? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. And the other issue just was the two Fragmites um, applications. One was with uh, Tyler came over to visit, yep. do a site visit to <coughs> 166 Waterhole Road. I don't know if you want to report on that. But I'm, I'm basically I'm waiting on the trustees to just right. you know if there are additional questions or if you're ready to approve that. Yeah, I mean we looked at the site together. Um, they plan to you know expand the existing buffer zone, which was a, a plus in my mind. Um, I think the plant mix seemed really appropriate for the area. I mean. Uh, I don't know if, if you, we didn't really see, have any concerns as far as I remember. There was something about. No, in this case, the survey is recent, so that yeah, issue that come up good. in the past doesn't really apply here. There, there really were no concerns at this point. I'm yeah. still waiting on the, um, app, the applications pending over with DEC. That was. And yeah. with the, uh, the village, um, I think we still have a hearing coming up. Is this Marden? You, I'm sorry, with the Yes, the Marden, Marden property, yeah, okay. 166 uh, uh, Motor Hall yep. Road. Did you have any concerns I about did. the application? I looked at, I looked at the application okay. um, and the file today. Um, number one is that there's no estimated cost of the project included on the application. Um, number two, the two verification forms. Um, one, it is signed and notarized, but it's not printed out who's signing it. It's illegible. Um, the second verification form is signed and notarized by a Scott Marden. Um, it is signed by him, but it's not nor not notarized. So they're not, okay. neither one is correct. I did notice also um, in the short EAF part one that you provided us, um, the question number 15, it talks, it asks if there's any threatened or endangered species associ or associated habitats existing on the site, and the answer was yes. So my question is what exists on that site and what are we gonna do to mitigate any problems with it with the Phragmite removal? The, uh, I'd have to look at the application to see whether or not, this is basically a DEC uh, form response that ticks that off, and it probably has to do, I'd have to check and see, but it probably has to do with the fact that there are piping plovers within the larger area, not the property. They're not talking about the property specifically. In the area that we're proposing to do the work, I can guarantee there's definitely nothing there that, we're, that's, that would trigger a yes. Okay. But this is a set thing, you can't really change that. When you go into the EAF mapper, there's like three, there are probably three or four fields that come back already filled in. This is one of them. So it, there's something within the larger uh, Hog Creek. Something you know, within a geographical area. Right, that they define as being of importance. Bruce, are you hand cutting on this project? Or yes. It's hand cutting only. Right. I can see whether or not I can find out what it is, but I, I can't, I'm almost sure it would be piping plovers. Should we speak about that issue of the length of the cutting that's come up now? When we went to the site, I mean, I'm gonna just not go there. <laughs> uh, the thing that Tyler is referring to is the fact that it's sort of out of our hands, but DC at this point is saying that the, the Phragmites has to be cut no lower than 18 inches, which as an ecologist or as a biologist, I think is an inappropriate way to, to deal with this, yeah. if you're really trying to eliminate the Phragmites rather than just open up a view. But that's the restriction that we have. This is a recent change? In yeah. The they want you to they leave 18 inches? That. They want you to leave it's the bottom? Isn't but. generally understood that if you cut fragmites like that, you're encouraging its growth? No, not necessarily encouraging it. What, the, what they're arguing is that, first of all, the plant doesn't photosynthesize because most of that is taking place on taller parts of the stem that you're cutting, although they don't oh, document Earth. that, and I would imagine the stem does do some photosynthesis. Yeah, it's green. It must photosynthesize. I don't see why. Presumably, yeah. Um, Otherwise, I mean, the chlorophyll is being wasted there. But the second thing is that, um, I think this is sort of a one size fits all where they want to make sure that, they're, that the applicant doesn't go in and clear all the vegetation, claiming that they are tackling the Phragmites. 
And so when you cut it to 18 <coughs> inches, you're pretty much guaranteeing that some of the native vegetation underneath is going to be protected. So I don't think it's appropriate. I've, I've done my best to make my case to DC and lost. I don't Bruce. think they get it. Bruce. I just don't. Yeah, it's really inappropriate. So you know what, what you're doing. What have you done in the other locations? Was well, it just physical removal or? No, this is, a new, this is a new wrinkle from DC. So in the past, you were able to cut below that? Yes. See, on our charts with each water body, DEC needs to be on every one of them. Where did this new wrinkle come from? I don't know. Was it open for public comment or anything? No, because they don't really have, you can't go on a website from DC and find these guidelines. These are just things that this you can have to call a meeting, I guess, with DC to discuss it, but after our last meeting, I'm not sure that's gonna be very productive. So, I mean, you're supposed to leave 18 inches of, what about if it's in, in water? If in water, it's possible, well, they have a different set of rules and they allow you to cut the first time down to six inches and after subsequent cuts are not positive. It may, I think it's still possibly 18 inches. I'm not Are sure. they providing scientific basis for this position? I haven't seen it. Do they it? seem to understand we've lost entire ponds to the frightened ladies? <laughs> you know how capable I, I am of responding for DEC on this. I, yeah. don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know their thinking. And I'm not even sure what to do in terms of our hands seem to be tied on it. Well, it's very frustrating given that, you know, mm. as a large organization, they should be handing down things that are looser, and we should, if we want to make things more strict, that's up to local guidelines, in my mind. I mean, well, silly to be handed down such them. strict regulations from a higher body of government when... So who has met with DEC? Who, my mind. who would DEC has been part of that meeting? We know what uh, we're doing, you know. In turn, we didn't go to specifically to discuss this, but Bill, uh, Francis, Jim Grimes, Sarah Davis, and myself went up to a meeting in, just in December. And who did you meet with? Uh, we met with uh, Rob Marsh, who's in charge of yep. that section, uh, Mark Carrera, Kevin Kerspert, and uh, another, a new... And this was all discussed at that meeting? No, no the discussion so. primarily focused on the excavation and other issues. But this is something they're trying to, I think DC is trying to sort of revamp and standardize how they deal with Fragmites permits, permit applications. They didn't even, they didn't mention that at that meeting. No, that was afterwards with me. Remember, yeah. I had to stay after a little bit. Wow. <laughs> Snuck this one through. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I would say we're, we're you're, no, we just <laughs> say we're, we're going to issue a permit to cut them lower than that. Just tell the DEC, it's, it's, it's you got no basis for that. You know, that actually would be, that would just certainly be a foot in the door for a discussion, if yeah. nothing else. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. against that. No. I mean, no. it's it's an emergency it's kind of situation. Yeah. Um, Maybe they'll come out here and see. Maybe but, they'll come out with your name. <laughs> can't we argue that it. it would no, the I mean, recruitment of the native plants? You know, I mean, having too tall of the vegetation we're trying to remove shade would create out. shade, <coughs> might shade out the native plants that we're trying no, to I restore, would, and it's actually detrimental to the habitat restoration we're trying to do. I think you're probably right that it might do that. I mean, you could argue that it would do that, but I think there's you know, stronger it. grounds for just, you know, all the people that have tried to control fragmites through cutting, which is obviously not the easiest way to begin with. Right. You know, none of them suggest this other than DC. I mean, they're all saying that, you know, put a tent out there and camp somebody out there and cut it every time it comes up off the ground. Right. Just, <laughs> yeah. That's what I've always you know, heard. Just get out there and yeah. spend, but so the the, obviously then the cost becomes the issue. That's really been the cut constraint. Cut them more and not cut them less. Isn't it right. Like I think, you know. going to be killed anyway because of the fact that it's so well, if you don't do anything, <coughs> yeah, it gets to yeah, I'm, I'm sure any permit we issue you will not have that requirement. Well, that's good to hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you realize that, you know, in terms of how it's implemented, we still have to go by no, the most I, strict yeah. uh, permit. So that means that we still end up having to, to live with that. So I really do like the idea of <coughs> issue it the way you feel it should be issued. And then we'll uh, hopefully that becomes part of a discussion with DC. Right. Yeah. <coughs> I think if they're doing something as <coughs> as this, they're uh, not used uh, to having <coughs> someone who's preparing a project plan as detailed as Mr. Horowitz generally does, where it's site specific to this is where we're cutting, this is a native plant that's staying. I mean, we have it mapped out. They're probably not, probably have had too many applicants go through and just like cut that down is. everything. Bruce, so, you so, had a meeting with some of the yeah. trustees, but it wasn't about the, the height at which you cut this. No, the, our meeting had to do with the proposed excavation of the bottom. So, how did this come up? This oh, time? well, I have several other applications. I've had, you know, lots of meetings with DC other than on the excavation. So this has come up over the last month. 
the out, last month or so. Blue. Not out of the blue. I mean, I've had, quite frankly, I've had inconsistent responses to two dozen applications that I have before them on Fragmites over the last two years, mm -hmm. depending on who the analyst was at the time. And so, uh, you know, I've gotten different responses and had to respond differently in each case. But in terms of this is issue of the cutting, <clears throat> for a long time, you know, freshwater DC, freshwater wetlands and tidal are handled by different people for the most part, one overlap of just their boss, one person. And freshwater wetlands um, now uh, accepts the idea of it being a much more aggressive cutting. Tidal doesn't. Hmm. Have to work on this. Hmm. Well. Hmm. So do we have a couple of takeaways, Bruce, on this one regarding the paperwork that needs to be clarified? Right, I do. I have that. Thanks. Okay. All right. So I guess it's important that one form is notarized and this is legible. Yeah. But. Yeah. And then also I did a, I'm looking at notes. <coughs> The survey that was submitted included a, uh, a little notation regarding a planting plan that had been designed by InterScience in April of 2016, yet there was a separate restoration plan submitted with this application um, from the Della Pola company dated November 16. So we should just make sure that when we issue the permit, we reference the correct restoration plan. Yeah. I'll have to look at that again. Just, yeah. Consistency. Consistency is good. Yeah. You sure that's yeah. the right one? All right. And then, Rick, in terms of the no, other one we talked about, I think I can wait until application. after we've had That's what I remember on that. Yeah. I remember seeing it or something. I'll come back and talk about both that. I'll check it out again. That was on okay, the survey. Sure. Yeah. 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 So Very good. Sometimes Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes it's a reference to survey, and it's <coughs> Excuse me. So what should we do about the Martin application, then? Bruce has got some follow-up items. To so we'll just table to it for now? Yeah, yeah. table to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Bruce, really. OK, Dan Lester. <coughs> Good evening. Bear with me. I got a little bit of a, little bit of a list. Yeah, thanks. Um, first thing I want to touch base on is the mooring application that I just received in the mail. Um, was there any discussion? I mean, I didn't, I've been watching some meetings and stuff. I see you guys got some new rules. You are going to offer us stickers. Well, first off, the sticker's not staying in my mooring. It's not going to happen. The tags you gave us don't even stay in the moorings, especially where I have my mooring in Air Pig Harbor mm -hmm. with the tide runs. It's not going to work. <laughs> and it also mentions to put a sticker on the boat. Well, that's all well and good, but I'm not speaking just for myself, but even Steve. And I put more than one boat on that mooring. I may register one, but I have four different boats. You guys only allow me one mooring per harbor. I work with two other guys. We have three moorings. We got eight boats. Okay. So at any given time, I may have my lobster boat here. I may have a trap <coughs> boat here. I got a I got a boat that I use to drive poles. It doesn't even have a motor on it. Doesn't even, not even registered. It goes on a mooring. So you guys are asking for something that's just not feasible for us as commercial fishermen. Mm -hmm. So right. that's Let's follow on that. I got a call from another bayman as well who had received his application. And um, I noted that there's no, normally in the past, if we were going to change one of our forms, the board would approve it. Lori puts a little notation on the bottom, the date that that form was approved. But that's not the case right now. So the form <laughs> was amended without knowledge of the other board members. So I just wanted to throw that out there that it took me by surprise too. It was, <coughs> if it was, maybe I wasn't at the particular meeting, but I don't yeah, remember approving a change to the boring form. I think it was brought up there. Yeah. Now, they yeah. use these stickers in Sag Harbor, right? I mean, that have been, and they, they, they don't have an issue with right. it. The stickers, they stay I remember, on, they the stay on the mooring. Board. Yeah, but you got to understand, so like, I don't use a regular mooring ball. I use lobster pot buoys for my mooring. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stick on there, and every one of us do the same thing. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy a mooring ball for $500 that with a metal rod that goes through it, and after a couple of years, it rusts out. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Mine's all rope, chain. You know, I probably make a better mooring than a mooring company does. And it's just not gonna, it's not, for us, it's not feasible. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the tags, you know, you, I can't even keep bottom paint on the buoy in Epic Harbor because the tide takes it off. Mm -hmm. So putting a plastic sticker on the thing is just not gonna happen. Um, it's just, <coughs> I wanted to bring it up. Um, Thank you, really. Yeah, you know, because I mean, I, I try to deal, like Treadwell called me last year. He says, Where's your mooring tag? Because he was out doing all the things. 
I said, well, it was on there, it's going now. You know, I said, go to the trustees, they approve my permit, but it just doesn't stay on there, they so break what off. what did you do in the past? <coughs> Better. Well, they gave us the tags, and you put the tag Did on the there. I mean, where these guys are in Akabonic Harbor is no problem because there's no tide. But where I am, I'm right next to the launch ramp in Napig Harbor. My buoy's underwater more than it's out, so the tags break off. It's just not. What easy. about carving your numbers into your buoy? Well, I shouldn't. I mean, I you guys approved the application, so when you come down, I mean, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for the last 15 years, so it's you know the same spot every year. You don't know who it is. Yeah, I, so I mean, and I you know, and the harbor masters know it. And, and if they have a problem, they come down and they, and they ask you guys, "Oh, can I see that application?" It's just a little paperwork trail. So ju I'm just throwing it out there. We'll, um, we'll see if we can re rework yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. rework it a little bit. Because putting fun, for yeah. us putting a sticker on the boat that's registered for that mooring, being that you only give me one mooring per harbor, I may have a different boat on there. Mm -hmm. And they're all, I mean, they're all registered. <coughs> they're all, you know, but it's just not going to work out. Um, in our case, anyway, as commercial fishermen. Uh, the second I wanted to talk, touch base on is the dredging. Um, we really got to do something with the dredging. Um, Brian Burns addressed me after the elections were over. He said, well, what can I do to help you? And I said, nothing. I said, you guys, as a board, sort of messed up. The worst thing you could have done, and just having the conversation with the gentleman that was just here about the DEC, the worst thing you could have done is recognize the DEC. You see the problems you're having? Dredging, Pat Bistrian used to go to the creek. He'd go down to his excavator, dig it out, and it was good for a year. I mean, it wasn't the best job in the world, but it worked. These but guys, there, was, there was a permit for that. Well, yeah, I know, but there has to be permits a permit. are null and void with the town. I know what used to happen with this board. The, the, the town board used to, the, Nature and people there that you work for, whoever yeah. is there, they used to get the permits. Right. It's all political fiasco. Somebody got mad, so now they're not getting the permits for you. So now you're doing it. It's that simple. It's politics. And trust me, I've been in this industry for a long time. I dislike the DEC. I don't like them. They're useless people, and they're going to screw the town over at any cost they can get. They're not going to give you the permits at a timely manner. By the time this year's out, these guys in the springtime that fish out of uh, Akabonic Harbor, are not getting out of there to go fishing. It's going to be filled right in. Yep. Um, I fish out of Nat Pig. They dredged it a couple years ago, but the problem is you got to look at the bigger picture. Okay, there's water in front of the launch ramp and everything else, but what about inside? You can't go around Strong's Point without hitting bottom, and there's no water flow anymore. It's all got to come out. So we need to address this. Georgia Pond is a Georgia Pond is just a crap show, and that's got to be dredged at the south end by the by the ocean. Um, you know, Matthews Point, you guys even know where it is, it goes across the middle of the pond. Somebody's got to go in there and take some of that out because there's no water flow going to the north end. I mean, you were just discussing they it. They will not let us dredge on the east side. And east side of what? Not the Lazy Point. I don't think it should be open. I think that was the best thing that done, was closed off, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm talking about the right, the east side. Yeah, I think that's the best thing that was ever happened is that closed up, and I'm going to tell you why. Talking to small timers, Years ago, even in the 70s and 80s, when that, both harbors, both of those things were open, sometimes there was no scallops. Whenever there was one, one channel open in Epic Harbor, there was scallops in that place. And what about Every when time. the west was closed? If there was just one channel, it was better than having two. So it didn't so, matter which one? Didn't matter. Didn't, didn't, matter. Matter. didn't matter which one. I honestly think that you don't need the two. I really don't. No. But uh, well, we're talking about closing one open and the other, then yeah. everyone will hear of it. Um, but Dan? Just we got to really get onto the dredging. Yeah. Would would the, the yeah, we agree. Would, yeah. The, would, yeah. The, would <laughs> the shoaling on the inside, <coughs> would that be improved yeah. by one versus the other channel being open? Would the east channel help? No, because you got the big flat in the middle. Okay. And that's been there forever. I mean, so since that I has can remember, you know, but so that doesn't matter. But it's just the point of it's, you know, it's coming in there and there's so much tidal flow coming in that whatever sand's coming in, it's getting pushed and it's stopping. Shoaling. And it's getting shoaled up, and it's yeah. got to, you know. Yeah. I mean, Again. it used to be fairly deep going through there, but not anymore. Okay. I'm in the process of updating the trustee dredging plan. I'd okay. love to reach out to you and some of your fellow BAME and, yep. and get your input on it. Okay. So I'm in the middle of taking this legacy document from 2008 and trying to freshen it up. Beautiful. So if uh, I could get your contact number, I'll give you mine. We could meet up at the trustee office sometime. And sure. And I'd love to have you weigh in on the different water bodies. Okay. And we are trying to get real aggressive here, trying to get some of the CPF money to be allocated 
Yes. For dredging. There's a there's, lot of work that needs to be done. We realize it. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a ton of work. Yeah. You know, so we, we want to embrace just, you on this and, and do the right thing. It goes back to something Bill just said earlier that, yeah. you know, all these engineers, they don't want to listen to anybody the other day. that's a local yeah. has any clue. They just, yeah. you know, I'm an engineer and this is, looks good on paper. Well, right. cool. yeah. understood. Yeah. Um, so obviously, George Capond um, and uh, Barley's here. I was actually just talking to him about this before, but. Uh, I want to touch base on the enforcement a little bit for the oysters and stuff like that. Um, Northwest Harbor, on the flat in the middle where they've been planting the oysters every year, well, it's a conditional area. It only opens in the winter. Oysters growing. They're staying there. It's working out very well. Nice Nobody's poaching them because it's a closed Thank area you. all summer. So this goes right to the fact of there's a couple bad eggs around town, and a few of us know who they are. Um, <coughs> They're planting these oysters in the you know the other spots, Hog Creek and this, that, and the other thing. And some of these guys are coming in, you know, even there's a lot of the city people are coming in and taking the undersized oysters. So it just goes to show you how much poaching is going on mm -hmm. versus where Barley put them in Northwest Harbor because it's a conditional area. So I think enforcement, we really need to get on to, you know, Marine Patrol, let them know what's going on. And it's a perfect example. Last couple of years, the oysters have been real thick and, you know, nobody's taking them because they, they can't take them in the summer because it's closed. So. Um, and the other thing was I, I scuttlebutt, I never got a phone call about it, and I heard something about it. You guys were asking for insurance for the moorings, for the boats? No, no. not this year. No. Okay, well, I, I'm just going to give you a little heads up before you do ask for it. I can't even get insurance on my boats. Um, <coughs> it's, all my boats are registered commercial, but we're not a big enough entity for anybody to give us commercial insurance. I can get insurance to cover the... If it sinks, it'll cover the outboard, electronics, whatever, but it's not gonna cover like oil spill or anything like that. Um, it doesn't matter anyway, because there's not enough water in the harbors where we keep our boats, so the outboards probably won't even go under if they sunk. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a hard press for us to get insurance. Um, my wife's been in the insurance agency for 25 years, and she's been looking, and it's not feasible. Because you know, if I was a 100-foot dragger, yeah, no problem, here's the insurance, pay me $50,000 a year. But for what we do, there's no physical insurance. So just for future reference. I think the bigger, biggest, bigger concern was the larger boats in Three Mile Harbor that are more. Okay. Well, most of those people, I mean, I'd have to say probably the majority of them have insurance on those bigger would, vessels. I would hope so. so and uh, because they have to. Yeah. But uh, and, and, and for us, I mean, it's to the point where I already spent enough money. I can't afford it. I mean, Mm -hmm. Let the thing sink. Not oh, sure. <laughs> he's, he's already putting us out of business. Maybe we can find a size, a size cutoff. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, find a certain cutoff for a size then, you know? That, you well, either that too. I, mean, I, I know you guys were talking about the derelict vessels and duck yeah. lines and everything yeah. else. You know, my concern is if somebody's willing to get a mooring permit, that if their boat sinks, I'm sure they're going to go take care of it. They're not going to leave it there. So it's usually. You know, like it's the people that don't go and get the permits that are the ones that are going to leave their crap there and you're never going to find out who it is. Yeah. So, but other than that, that's it. I mean, I just think that, you know, it's a big deal with the dredging. Yeah, we've been it looking is. at pictures of Akabonic that Steve Gold yep. brought up here. Yeah. It, it, it is it's on the schedule. Bad. It is on the schedule yeah. for 2018 with the county, with the big county yeah. dredge. And we are looking at trying to do something before then just to maybe hit that shoal on the Yeah, inside. definitely. So. And just, you know, and for future, too, when it's time for Nat Pick again, like I said, it's not just a, you know, I actually asked the guys when they were there dredging, we were going out, and I said, how far are you going? He said, I'm going to the launch ramp and stopping. I said, well, what about the inside? Because I know it all goes by the cubic feet yeah. and all the, you know, whatever, yeah. but think about that for the future yeah. when we go to do some of these other places. Maybe we need to yeah. not worry about the entrance as much as we do inside a little bit. That's one of the things we got to really try and get this. 2% money because there's a lot of environmental dredging that has to be done that Suffolk County is never going to do. Yep. And we have to come up with a program to either do it ourselves or pay to have it done. Yeah. And that's that's where it's going to be. There's, there's places all over to... town where if it doesn't go to a launch ramp, Suffolk's not going to do it. Yep. So well, that's another discussion. I mean, I... Yeah. Since, well, it's been, since it's been available, there's only been one environmental permit issued by the DEC it's in, in years. So again, it goes back to you know yeah. working with yeah. them to get their to get the permits process easier. Will they yeah. more easily give you a permit to scoop dredge it 
Like when the stream used to it's go down? Navigation, Pro yeah. proving yeah. the navigational you can't get dredging. Deep in the harbors with them. Yeah. yeah. It's all, for yeah. them, it's, it's all about it's, the navigation. It's, it's not about the water quality. Norman used to call the band aid. The band aid was the excavation. Right. That was it. Yeah. Well, we were looking for But is to that get better than nothing? Yeah, yeah the band aid yes. is better than nothing. No, it's always better than nothing, but yeah. eventually you're going to have, like I said, you can band aid, you know. Yeah. Say, okay. say Nat Pig Harbor, for instance, you can band aid it all you want and have water going to the, to the launching ramp. But if guess what? If there's an island going from there across the, right. the channel and you can't get any water to the back, you're done. <coughs> it's like what good's a band aid when, when you need surgery? Exactly. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's just something to yeah. address for the yeah. future. So yeah. one thing is yeah. we need a dredge. That would be the other thing. Yeah, is we solution. don't need the DEC. <laughs> That's coming <laughs> across very clearly. Well, huh. you know when we need our own dredge. Yeah. But yeah, the county is one of the very few public organizations that has a dredge, so it's, yeah. Well, yeah, and that too, and, you know, just uh, talking about the Pig with the launch ramp, I met with Larry last year. He came down one day, and we were talking about the launch ramp, about changing it, because he was thinking about changing it, because, you know, the, the tide and everything. I gave him a suggestion, but I haven't heard anything since whether or not. What was it? Leave, we're you got to leave the existing one there, because if you take the existing one out, you'll have nothing left. Leave the existing one there and just add one going out to the to the east, you know, to the northeast. Right on top of that surge next, stone, next, right? Yeah, you know where it's deep to the right hand side of the ramp? That's where you ought to just go with like a, another piece of ramp. But you gotta leave the existing one there, because if you don't, you're gonna have nothing left. This Old is beach. what the locals said with this last storm, that that, that boat um, launching ramp, though ineffective to launch a boat off of, broke the water coming from the northeast mm -hmm. Yeah. If it hadn't been for that, it would have wiped out those houses. Yeah. You guys you guys launch right to the left-hand side. As you yeah, we always just launch on the same beach place. because yeah. we, is, you know, that, why use the ramp? Yeah, you have a safer launch. Yeah. And then uh, just one other thing that I wanted to bring up was uh, something else with Georgia Capond. Um, with the, as in regards to the kayakers, you might be able to help me out with that. During the duck season, you should really not let anybody at least do the rentals during the duck season. We had this problem years ago, and uh, well, it was a long time ago, Richard Lester was on the board, and we stopped it for the duck season because you get these people in there. It's just, it's a safety factor. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, Good point. Not, I, mean, I mean, I know that you're renting the kayaks or whatever, but it's definitely. Yeah, we don't. We don't. It's definitely yeah, a safety factor. Not, not there. That's an individual business. Okay. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah. Well, no, I know it's an inv individual business, big. but uh, <coughs> you know, it's a safety yeah. issue. So for that, for that business, you're really. We'll take that into yeah, consideration. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Dan, thank you. Dan, yes. what, what's your thoughts on putting that ramp on the west side of, of the existing ramp? I don't think it would work because there's no water there. Mm. It's very shoal there. You've got a deep, a natural deep hole to the east. So that would be the, you know, and it, it, what happens is on the other side, it eddies around. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it'd be much easier. You'd be really be knocking the tide, tide down and it'd be easier to load, load and launch your boat. So then that's going to get the bulk of that tide coming from the north. <coughs> the original one will. Although, no, the, the new, new one will. The new one will, yeah. It's going to right. require a lot of yep. right. Right of it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think a, a dock or some pilings down there would? It used to be an old it? dock there. Yeah, a couple of pilings would make it a, yeah. a world a lot, lot easier to do, right? used to, to be do, a right? dock there years ago. Yeah. In other words, you're sort of saying, I think, that the existing launch ramp should stay almost as a break. And the trustees Pretty years much, ago, yeah. that's where the, the, ramp, the, one the year, original yeah. ramp is where they <coughs> wanted to put it. We have to be aware, too, our property doesn't that's extend too far I east of that. I know that. Right. Right. Yeah. That's an issue. And is they, it, is they, a, they wouldn't. State land. Yeah. There's a little room there. Yeah. I think there's enough room. That's why I was first on the trustees. All right. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Steve, do you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know about the, uh, I have a little bit of different circumstance with the boats down at uh, Pacabonic. Uh, one boat is in my son's name, Wayne, and uh, he, had a, he had a mooring permit down there, but he uh, failed to renew it one year. So in the spring when I'm getting set up and I need two boats, I've been using uh, either Mitch Falter's mooring when he has it in or uh, Nat Miller's. You know, because their boats aren't in the water yet, usually down there. So I was just wondering if I can continue doing that without having a sticker on my boat. You know, use their mooring instead of, you know, for the extra I, boat. I, 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 I mean, I see, what, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a sticker on the boat so it matches the mooring. And then if it doesn't match, you get a ticket. That's what the deal is. And, and we're not targeting the commercial guys. It's it's. Well, the then you should write an exemption into that for the commercial guys be. because a lot of times I have two boats in the water down there, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Uh, I only have one mooring down there, mm -hmm. 
Another issue is where I am moored near the ramp, uh, the water is so shoal there now. Every, the last two years, I've had to add rope to my mooring to get it further out so that at low tide, the boat's not sitting on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to, if the county is going to come in and dredge, I would request that they dredge to that ramp at least. That's, yeah. that's what we're trying to get. And if, I mean, if they can go around that point, because I know the other boats are having trouble. If you look in the picture, <coughs> there, that's uh, the one picture. Shows your dog. You know, that's not my dog, but. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's only like maybe 10 at the most. 15 foot wide, and some of that yeah. water on the opposite side is only maybe eight or ten inches deep, and the tide's still going out there. So you know, it's really turning into a safety issue getting through there yeah. uh, at this point. Yeah. And you know, I know at one meeting they spoke about the economic value. I know the town did a study. Uh, they figure the inshore guys, the multiplier is like five. So if I averaged out my last 10 years of fishing, it, it comes out to about 250 grand a year for my boat. Okay, so you're looking at, there's only maybe four or five active fishermen down there now, maybe six. It used to be a lot more when the, har the harbor was accessible. Uh, I know Mitch Vulture, he's not gonna be able to get his boat in and out of there this year, so that's gonna cut him out of a good chunk of his income for two months. And, um, and uh, I mean, it, ha it has to be, it has to be, something has to be done yeah. by mid-March, I would say, you know. And what I've also noticed in the last two years since the county's been there, uh, the amount of people using that ramp has gone down. You have a lot of fly fishermen that take uh, guides out every summer. I only saw those guys down there a couple times this year, and usually... When the fish are in the area, there's maybe four or five of those guys that use that ramp daily. <coughs> um, I think the reason is, one reason is that low water, when you launch your boat off of that ramp, it goes right into mm -hmm. the mud, you know, because there's no water there at all. I mean, I have trouble with 18 footer and that boat only draws about 20 inches of water. Mm. A lot of times I have to put the motor up to get away from we know that, we've told that area and um, mm. You know, so that's that's pretty much the issue. I just don't want to be ticketed when I have two boats down there. That's all. Yeah. Because well, you're going to be giving a ticket to my son, and he's a police officer now. I don't think he's going to appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if Wayne wanted to request the mooring in a slightly different place, I'm sure we could accommodate. Yeah. Well, he you know he had one, and then when he was he was moving that year, and he lost the paperwork, so yeah. it never got sent in. You know? yeah. And then yeah. last so year he said, oh, did you renew the permit? I said, well, you didn't put the paperwork in. So, so reapply, he yeah. just said. Um, reapply. It's good to reapply. Okay. Yeah. We want to work with you guys, but you know, we should we get could. the permits in too. No, I appreciate Maybe it. Maybe keep a list of multiple boats in the, in the office. Um, that, that's not it was a No, that's about it. And, and then water flow. Give, them, give the mooring to the fishermen to use as he likes. You know, but I don't think the waiting list applies to the commercial people. When it when it comes to doesn't have to you know when it comes to water quality too I mean that creek is like out of trickle right now you know and uh, I mean you need to get the water flowing in there. And um, you know, I have heard. I, I mean I think I think if they dredge right to the ramp and they go six or eight feet or maybe even ten foot deep in the main <laughs> channel there, I think the water will stay cooler for a longer period of time. Sure. Yeah. And you'll get a lot more flushing in there. You'll have a lot less problems with algae blooms. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. So well, there, there are a number of people on this board who, who still have an interest in a town-owned dredge. I don't yeah. think we have the support of the town board. Well, if you, so I, I think you it, guys should be having this conversation with them also. Well, where is the where is the permitting process now, at, at specifically for Akabana Harbor? Twenty eighteen with the county. And we well, what about what about getting a, a like a, a like a maintenance dredge? The permit, permit's so. in place. Yes. They the just have place. Oh, so they can go down. It's just yeah. that's when they can come and do it. But what was the? Uh, the main, I thought we were waiting on sound. Yeah, I mean for the main dredge, but I mean, but I mean just, <laughs> I mean I'm just talking about yeah, I'm talking about going down there, I'm thinking, having you know, this, this the point, or somebody go down like they used to and just you know yeah, take that's, out maybe. That's not a big deal. Oh, okay. That's us. We just so you can get that done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Come down and dig it out. 
No, I think those permits are still in place, aren't they, Diane? I don't know. I think it's that's a part of that is permit that from, the that last, from the last from the last direct maintenance. So if that's if that's still yeah. in place, then yeah, you can. A lot of the, a lot of those permits yeah. are are in the yeah. county's name, but we can call the county up and tell them we want to do what part of it. What were we waiting it. on soundings for? Yeah, because to, you know, to extend it to the launching room. I can tell you how fast that thing fills in. This spring, yeah. I went walked out down to the edge as far as I could get at low tide. And I put a stick in the ground, you know, right up to my nipples, right? That's how far it was sticking out of the ground. Size measure. And in three days, yes. so we have no, scope. Yeah. three days of east wind, and there was only one day where it blew over 30 miles an hour, that stick was buried, okay? Yeah. And now that stick is about 50 feet from where the water is now. Now that, that point comes out. Can right? we? You know, the other day, that, the other day that beach easily grew. Just to get them through the summer? You can't one reach out that way to tides. do what he's talking about. No, need, he's uh, talking about, <laughs> he's 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 talking about a scoop dredge. So they're they're going it's just on that little point. Yeah. yeah. They put all the dredge material. Yeah. They put it. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about like Pat Bistrian yeah. coming yeah. down. Yeah. This next one is going to shut. It's going to blow. When the tide comes up high enough, we're done. He's winning. Yeah, we've got to find a way to help definitely. Definitely. We gotta get It's the same thing we've that. always we done every spring. Mike, come on, get, a, get up here. And right, well, anyway, thank call. you very this much. Okay. Now I've got to deal with this. Steve, you okay. point about the safety? So I turned around and I said to Pat the same thing about putting a little jetty on it, putting a culvert on it, making it coming around, putting a bend into it because we got the flat on the outside, so it's filling the whole harbor in. The harbor's bad. It's all dead bottom. It's a joke. There's no clams. There's nothing living in there. <coughs> When's the last time it was scooped? Well, no hard did it. We, that's the other thing. Uh, actually, I was, where the boats are, what Steve was talking about, because that's what I was saying. It's going from the ramp all the way around, right to where Andy Rigby's mooring is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going right around to the roadway. Digging that out with that. We can, we should. Because it's got to get done. Willie Mahar did that, and that was in the 70s. So we can all that done. Yeah. However we can. I don't no, because Mitch Fultz's father, all them guys had them big power boats. I mean, and Mitch can't get in did. the I don't summer know at all. No. Piggyback no. None of us can. Because there's a permit. It's right? bad. Yeah, it's Probably terrible. Right. It's, it's done. done. I mean, you know, we got to get an escalator in and get something done. Let me look through it. We're going to we're going to check on the exact status of the permit the next two weeks before the next meeting. Yeah, because if you want to come back at the next meeting, we'll give you every spring we use. Yeah, you want to give me a phone number before then. Yep. We'd like to see it done for you. For sure. Yeah, it's important. Well, it's like I was talking to Pat. It's about getting it, pushing that, pushing the point back to where it used to be. Sure. Because the the roadway, if you go down and sit on the point, if you look out on the flat, that's where the roadway used to be. You could take a rock and throw it to Gerard Park. Right. Yeah. No. That that and whole that's end what is. I'm talking about they keep, putting it back they and keep, then putting a, a they, hook into it. They keep seeing. Putting. Every time we get east wind, it's filling the harbor in. Going right in. <laughs> and it's a joke. It's a waste of money what everybody's doing. This right. is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like a revolving Lazy door. point, the same other thing. It's a joke. Putting in another ramp, doing this and doing that, what a waste of money. Put the dread, uh, put the uh, channel back where it used to be, <laughs> right through the middle. That's where it came through, and then what do they do? Fill it back in. Yep. For what? Take it where the houses are, fill that in, so that way the houses are done. They're safe. Right. Makes sense. I was and there then, then. I lived down there. Yeah, and it's a joke. It's because you got such a narrow way coming through there, and you wonder why the harbor's filling in. Yeah. You got a flat on the west side. You got a flat on the east it's side. It's the DEC. It's common sense. Yeah. At this point, county, it's just the county does that. Dredge. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Lots. Of and it makes money. absolutely no sense. But now Tim said back to Acabonic. But we used to always uh, excavate it every spring. Yeah. Yep. Up you know. until when? Well, that ha helps, but we got yeah, if so we take it and put it in like I'm saying, and when we dredge it instead of putting it on the outside, so this is where they screwed up. <coughs> <laughs> put it on the outside. They should mm -hmm. put it way down the Look beach. Look what it did yeah. after the northeaster. It was in the cr it was in the crack. Yeah. They put it right where it's going to come back. Go it does make yeah. it makes absolutely no sense. Build a dike and put and do it, and then build the point back up. Mm -hmm. The trees are all yeah. dying. They're dead. But you know what happens it makes when absolutely we, no sense. You know what happens when we and advise sure the you see we want to change the all, permit? I talked to Pete Bistry and the same yeah, thing. Yeah, we knew it. It comes new. You know, put a dike in there to pump it in there and then build that point up. Yeah, it's it could be beautiful. Very frustrating. Put steel out, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. And then just put a jetty on it, it like can, I'm saying, yeah. cover, get something together. Steal it out there and cover it with sand. Because yep. I talked to old man yeah. Pat, the same thing, and I talked to Pete Bistry. Yeah, I that point has come back so. hundreds of feet. Yep. Diane, say mm -hmm. that yep. again. I was saying that if we want to pursue what Mike is recommending with the harbors, they are not conforming with what the existing permits are for, so which is similar to our Georgica issue. Yep. And you then the DEC will say you can't have it, you can't renew it, it's a new application. So let's start this process all over again. Mm -hmm. And you're a decade later, you might have a permit. So this is again going yeah. back to getting these that's permits. Bad. It's got to get that's through. where the nightmare yep. is. Yeah. Or a little pressure, to to maybe some more like pressure on our, on our thing with Danny and them guys. You know, everybody's gotta get together and, and nice. figure this out and then do something with these permits. It's a joke. So getting the DC, DEC together with the fishermen yeah. and us yeah. would yeah. not yeah. be a bad idea. I know idea. Chuck Hamilton real well. I know people he's, in there. Isn't he retired? He's going yeah, but I mean, he's got full. Yes. But I can still, you know, he's good for the <coughs> family. So I've already t discussed this with Chuck and, uh, you know, with Pat and them. So the whole thing is getting the permits. And that's what Pat told me, the same thing. He goes, it's just the lack on the permits. And it's a joke. Francis, you're we'll laughing. Talk it. to us. I'm not laughing at all. And tell no, us what, what can be done. Well, well, first of all, I believe the reason that point is coming in the way it is is because the channel's trying to go back to where it originally was. Where there's houses. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's why that's happening. Yep. And <laughs> so, so this is going to be a continuing battle no matter yeah. what you do on, in that channel. But the worst thing they did was in the 80s when they turned around and they dredged it and they took the pipe and they went across and mm -hmm. put it out there. That's what made the flat. Mm -hmm. I know that for a fact. Sure. Yeah, they'd... I've been on the water for a long time. But but yeah. every time they dredge there, they do do half yeah. the distance yeah. they that they're supposed the sand, to do. They keep putting the sand and putting it on the outside and that's right. what's filling them in. <coughs> that's what I'm saying. The county just doesn't do the, you know, they don't do enough dredging. They're broke. There's always a reason. They start a job and they run out of money halfway through. Yep. And, yeah. and they don't put it where we want it. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's try and get you well, some relief. Well, the best thing is, is just let Pat yeah. hold that in there. Let's try and get some relief from we'll the spring. Get spray. rid of the sand, yeah. let him, or whatever, or just put it on the front. Last time you had to buy a dredge. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was right before, it was right when we hit that financial crisis in the right. McGinty administration. We were ready so, to pull the trigger and the yeah, bottom the fell out. Yeah, the day before the application was going in, they said, no, we don't have the, uh, yeah. I think at the time it was 600000 and mm -hmm. we would get reimbursement for at least half of that. And the town said, we don't have that much to put out of pocket. And so it was a no-go. $500,000. But, but right now, right now there's no support. Yeah. 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 Could have been useful. It was part of the dredging application plan was to utilize that barge to help move the equipment where it needed to go. Right. We also had, a, there's a lot of infrastructure we had within the Harbor Masters Department and the Highway Department, um, you know, the, the uh, upland equipment and, <coughs> and personnel to help implement and operate that dredge. Sure. And now our, 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 those departments are depleted, their equipment is, you know, gone. Yeah. So we have to start almost from scratch and try to build up, see what can we do. Yeah. What about a grant? No, there's that was a yeah. grant, it, but it was a reimbursement grant, which means you have to put the money out first and then get reimbursed. Yeah. And the town and the trustees just didn't have that much to go at that one time. Are you guys uh, juris have jurisdiction over Pussy's Pond in Springs? You want to come up and talk? Come, up come on up, please. You're gonna yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's spreading. Yeah. People we need to hear from. Yeah, well, well, that's part of the Bonnet Harbor. Now, it seems to me like they uh, spent a lot of money on Pussy's Pond. They were doing, they're trying to. a grant. To, you know, there was grant money with the, they're, um, they're looking for ways to reduce the amount of nitrogen going in into the water bodies for the overall water body health. And that's a trial project. It's a, it's a trial project. Cornell Cooperative is doing it with the Natural Resources right. Department. The and DC is also involved, though, right? There's permitting involved, yeah. Permitting. Permitting. Cornell Cooperative is doing a lot of the work over there. So that's, that's designed to, to take some of the nitrogen out of the groundwater that's feeding in there. And the preliminary results seem good, but it's a, it's a test project. That's probably mostly road runoff, no? 
It's a, the, the nitrogen comes mostly from you know cesspools in certain areas. So, uh, you know, they got a grant to do that. Now, I talked to the person that was doing the job, kind of, and uh, my suggestion to her was that if they got a project and a grant to do Akabonic Harbor, where the water is coming from mostly, it would definitely help Pussy's Pond. Yeah. Well, yeah, so can I, go? I mean, it's, it's, it's a matter of there's, there's so many things that's contributing to the ill health of the groundwater. You have to try and fix them all, and you got to do them simultaneously. But as far as the dredging and stuff it, goes, this no, nothing this, simultaneous. There's nothing going on in Akabonic. Well, you know, the count that, well, I mean, this, this, uh, the, the, the utilizing a percentage of the community preservation fund for water quality is something we want to get these projects into. I mean, I mean, dredging, dredging should be considered as something that has to be done with that money. I mean, there's a source of funding that has to be allocated properly. Um, I, I personally don't think it all should go for, you know, Septic systems. Well, for septic systems without ignoring the problems we have now. Dredging is, you know, we're surrounded by clean water, and if we dredge properly, the water's going to be where we need it. It's going to clean our water up well, really you, quickly. I mean, it, My point know, is, it, these are things we're pushing for, for, we're pushing for pond, right now. Ed, the only thing that benefits is the ducks, really. Right. Uh, you know, so. but we didn't do that project. The town, <coughs> the town board did. Yeah. You know, so it's did. it's not like our you project. You don't have jurisdiction over Pussy Spawn. No, no, those we own the are, bottom lands yeah. there, but oh. Natural Resources designed the project and implemented it on it's, the shoreline. It's an upland project. Yeah, it's, it's an upland project, but it's also all of these things have to be done. It's not like this one you thing you can do. Yeah, but you have what what you got to do is you what you're trying to do is trying to do a lot of things at the same time. You got to do what you can do too. That you a lot can of do what you want to do, and you can't do them. And it's like doing, doing one thing doesn't yeah. preclude you from doing another thing. The, the dredging, the dredging has been a problem for forever out here. And that's great. We didn't do the project there. I don't know why you're yelling at us. We came this close to getting the dredge, and there's, there's I think we're no going like to start uh, over again. And clean water act or yeah. some kind of mm -hmm. federal grant you could get to get your own dredge. That way, yeah. if East Hampton owned a dredge and did our waterways, you could definitely lease it out to other communities. Well, totally, that's part of the thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, you really. This is this is where preaching to the choir here. We are. You know, it, might, it might provide jobs. I'm telling you, some some of the local baymen that don't do anything in the winter would definitely work on that dredge just to help out other. If there are town board members who believe that the town should not be in the dredging business. You should go and talk. Town to board them. members. Town board members. We would love so, you guys to help persuade them. I mean, yeah, we we want a dredge. I do. What most of us do. I do. <laughs> we want a dredge. Large. We all we <laughs> want to be dredging. When I ran for this, that was one thing that I was. I mean, you know, then you don't have to about all the time. The county, because the county. I wish we had our own dredge. The county. The last time the county dredged Akabonic Harbor was. I think Sandy hit. Is before that right? Sandy, yeah. right before Sandy. And then they found out there was more money to be made upstate, left the job in Akabonic, left the big sand hummet there. They were supposed to do to the ramp and left. The, yeah. the, Thank you very when, much. When we, did this, wow. when we did this study here, true, right? we, it shows that we could start at one harbor and go around and by the time we get to the last one, we can start all, all over again. Right. Yes. Yeah. But they left midway through. Now, this is, I, I don't know if this anybody was, saw this it. This was all prepared and we were. Hazardous danger left in mm -hmm. Akabonic when the county got done. Mm -hmm. is there yeah. and, and they started at the wrong end. They should start at the ramp and work their way out. Right. And, and the piece of equipment we were looking at could handle any of those channels except for possibly um, Perfect. Maidstone Park. Perfect. Diane, have the trustees in all of their history ever bonded for money? Like Not that I'm aware of. Does. Not that Are we I'm able to? Yeah. No, we can't. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Well, we don't have tax abilities. Yeah. No. You know? Well, yeah. we, we are working on this line. plan, and as I mentioned to Dan, I'd love to have your input on it. So, <coughs> okay. You know, I'm going to make an effort to reach out to you guys. I'd love are, to get are you, are you familiar with Springs area? Pussy oh, yeah. Pond? Yeah. The only thing that's missing on the north side is a tiki bar. <laughs> 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 There's actually a sand beach there now for the ducks. So they got the money from so anyway, it's just uh, it's something to look into for you guys. Absolutely. We, we want to support you guys on it. We want clean water, too. I like to go shellfishing. You know, I like to go fin fishing. 
So I, I really think we're all on the same page. I don't like to, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Well said. Anybody else? Anybody Do you else? want to speak, Rachel? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Rachel Grusin, friends with all of you from all different <laughs> perspectives. Um, I just want to reiterate what I'm hearing tonight. So um, we have a very narrow entrance right now, 10 feet. You can get through when there's no wind. You get 15 knots of wind, and you're coming in with a boatload of fish and nets, et cetera. You're up on the sand. So this has to happen now. You have six gentlemen in the room, mm -hmm. men and women, if not more, who have come to you to say that their livelihood entirely depends upon that channel being open in April. So uh, the question to you, thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you for the reports. I just want to emphasize what I've heard from my friends here tonight. What is the plan? So DEC permits, let's say Suffolk County isn't going to be dredging on our behalf till 2018. That's so correct. what is it, what's the action item? What are this? The, per the permit's not the problem at, in Acapulco Harbor, I don't believe. I'm, I'm almost positive the permit is there. The county can't come to do the work until so 2018. But can't we just hire someone that. to come in and do something? So what is the backup plan? Who is going we've to be doing it between now and April? We've, we've been discussing you know, using an excavator to try and knock down that shoal a little bit and make an incremental improvement. There is a little more homework to be done, and as I mentioned a little earlier, you know, this, in the next two weeks, we want to try and do some detailed research, and if you'd like to come back to the next meeting, we can give you an, a more accurate update at that time. We don't have an action plan in place right now. Okay, I, I, so, I'm emphasizing that because so, we can't wait two more weeks. Right. Well, we can't, we have to we have to. you'd like to meet next week, but it's gonna take a few days to. Okay, we just have to have that if, dredged in April for these gentlemen to get their boats right. out. If, if, we if can't, the permit we can't is in place. We can't make an action plan tonight. That's not going to happen. The county's not going to do it. So you're, you're, you you <laughs> could get a private company to dredge. Do you that have? Well, that I don't. I don't think we have the funds to pay for that kind but of a project. But if we if we sell the material to the we don't have the money. The the town is going to have to step in. Well, no. uh, wait a second. But if um, we, <laughs> right, Miss McNally's making a suggestion can, on how. Why don't you work with us and stay and help talk about we this? We can offset the cost of the excavator. We'll come up with a. We'll come up with a. Five come on back. minutes. We're going to come up with a. Yeah. Come on back. We're being so positive here. Let Pat come down and take the sand. That's what I want to. I don't. Okay. Is what no. there, there are ways to do it. Sure. That's yeah, what was done in that's the past. That's historically been done, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Right wow, we appreciate now, it. Idea exchanges are not plans. They have to be put down and organized yeah. in communications with someone like a Pat. Right. Why does Pat get to take the sand? <laughs> Guys. Why not? He's well, anyone, anybody with an excavator can get it done. You know, I think a lot of great ideas have been brought forth, but we do need to make a plan, and it does take a little bit of time to do that. So, you know, if you'd like to, if you'd like to exchange contact information, and I'm, I'm, make, I'm making a point that we can't just say, Pat, you want this in. Historically. Yeah. Right. Historically, it's been done privately. So, can we do that? He's a good choice as a contractor. He's a consideration. Absolutely. I don't think anyone's yeah. disagreeing with anything that's being said tonight, but you know, I wish we could yeah, snap our fingers and make this perfect. Yeah, we've been trying to do this I'm the whole time we've been here. Stubborn. And I just mm. don't hear you saying what the options are, what's the possibility. If Suffolk County isn't going to do, well, do it, long reach excavation. Long long reach excavator with a private. Do you have the to do it at this time? Point we check time? the permits and, and they're in place, money. then we'd love I'd personally love to hire someone to have it done for you guys as soon as possible. We want you to go out and fish and do what you do. I don't want to sit here and what else? Feel like I'm somebody who's holding up your livelihood or something like we ran to help you guys. Sure. And finding third the contractor. And then defining the project and bidding it out. Yeah, defining the yeah. project, bidding it out. <laughs> okay. And we have to decide is that you guys would do that or would the town do that? Kind of depends who's paying. Right. So. Okay, so I just heard three or four action items. Mm -hmm. And I hope there's progress in the next two weeks on those. I'm just trying to get stuff done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're in agreement with Because I listened 100%. to the auto or the video recording of this meeting, and the same conversation was happening in mid December. And I'm telling you, that creek is going to close up, and these guys cannot go out fishing. I have gone with them, and we will not be able to get out. And we're hearing you. Thank yeah, you. we don't want that, Rachel. Starts person too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can't see around that point. It's going to be an accident mm -hmm. there. Sure. And it's a safety uh, issue that we have to consider. <coughs> is Pat Bistrian the only one with a long reach excavator? It's, no. As far as I know of right now. Probably yeah. not. 
No, no we got to find out. that. That's, that's what, why you yeah, go we out. We got to find all this out. But I mean, find the project. They, they, you can put a piece of equipment. You can just, drive it right out to the point and work yeah, your way back. If you'd like to follow up before the meeting, I'd be happy to give you my contact information, you, and we'd love to have you back yeah, at the next yes, meeting, great. and we'll um, have an action plan. Okay, together. good. And I appreciate I appreciate Mr. Taylor's comment on the nitrogen in Pussy's Pond and so forth. I just the action item, the takeaway I hear from that is a request from the audience as to whether or not we can use CPF funds to do dredging. So I guess your We're your plan will be very right. useful well, in that in building the case. Absolutely. Uh, that's the what gentleman we're doing. was saying that you can't have flushing deep in in, in the Pussy's no. Pond area at the headwaters of the there's, tributary there's, if we're not dredging. There's, there's, exactly. there's so many projects Grid. that we could do that would actually improve with dredging would improve water quality. Yeah. Um, but the county just won't do them. And yeah. so this is frustrating. Whole, Trust me, we're all frustrated. This is what this like whole plan was put together <laughs> for originally. And it died for lack of funding, and now we're trying to resurrect it. But that has nothing to do with the emergency that's occurring right now because of weather-related issues and stuff to get out of Akabonic Harbor. And that's something we're probably going to wind up trying to find a way to get a piece of equipment on that point and make it 30 feet wider. You know, that's probably where it's going to come down to. That's it. Yeah. Right now, the town has convened a committee to define the use of that 20% of the CPF funds. Bill's on that committee. Yeah. So he's going to be advocating for this, these type of projects. Yeah. Of course. That's what we'll... Yeah, no, we want the dredge. Right. Trust me. Yeah, we, all, we all want the same thing. No, but I mean, um, we definitely have to do something about septic systems, but it's not the only thing we have to do. Yeah, we... <laughs> you got to... It's a million cuts, you need a million solutions, yeah? Well, keeping your people working seems to be a good angle to also hit them on. Yeah, we have to. Well, um, the most important. We want to support yeah. you guys on this for sure. Right. Uh, but I would say just one thing so you are all aware. If we were able to get to the point where we did have our own dredge for the town, I would actually be, be very hesitant to um, rent it out or allow other townships to use it, as desperate as they might also be because they are very, you know, delicate um, yeah. piece of equipment. And the potential for breakage or damage. is constant. Yes, so I would think we would, we would have to make sure that we can afford this and maintain this ourselves. Yeah. You use your own people. You don't, yeah. You don't yeah. use other, other uh, townships' people. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, that's different, right, yeah. And keep it okay. within town, like you just said. Right. And I'll yeah. just add one, one more bit to the conversation. So as, as the audience probably knows, um, these bays, these harbors, excuse me, don't sustain two cuts. So I think everybody's learned that lesson by now. <laughs> we know. So um, I'm sure you're all very well familiar that the Peconic Estuary Program funded a study of Napeague Harbor, and it's very cost prohibitive for them to dredge the uh, east cut, and it requires more permits. But there's a very strong argument to do that. We've heard some differing opinions in the room this evening. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it would be great to get the input of, yeah, of, of all of the fishermen, of the aquaculturists who are in the room, um, as well as the recreation people and the, the residents. Um, but I think a very strategic long-term plan needs to be developed for that. And even if we're encountering a lot of barriers to do the East Cut, yeah. we, should, we should thoroughly be you know, looking at it. There's a possibility you could open the East Cut for flushing purposes without making it suitable for navigation also. But with, it's with both channels, it's too. Up, yeah. Well, it did. Okay. I guess it did for ages, but it was maintained. We did it a while. It's, it's my understanding to reestablish that that East Channel is going to be a million dollar project. I think it's like million six million in the, <laughs> in the report by the um, yeah. from the engineers. It's, it's going to be a ten million dollar project at least. Yeah, but it might be for there are many different yeah. associated benefits uh, that could be mm -hmm. considered. We also heard strong arguments for one channel tonight. <laughs> Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, Do you okay. have your Thanks. names and phone numbers? Mm. <laughs> I just say it on like public no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Five, five, five. Swimmers. Yep. Swimmers and yeah. the paddle boards. Mike, yes. anyone, please, could you please yeah. jump, come up to the podium if you want to speak? Yeah. Were you? Uh, we got to move on. Okay. Yeah. Right. What, do you want me to write something down? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, but it's talking about the uh, paddle boarders and stuff that are in Akabonic, and it's it's ridiculous. 
dangerous. Tons of them. Yeah, there's tons of them. And, and it, we got a little narrow channel, same thing. You know that. Um, and it's like as soon as you come around the point, there's no place to go. If it's rough out, we got to come in on so You can't fish and make a living, but you're watching paddle boarders. Oh, especially when you're going to hit them. Oh, this is good. And, swim, and swimmers. And the swimmers the are just as bad on the yeah. point. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's no room. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And something's got to be done with it. Yeah, we don't want the channel because small. First of all, it's not. It's not. What a, a nice wide channel. channel. Yeah. We got you know we got the back of the channel. Well, you figure from the back of the creek to the front. You know, going out. Mm -hmm. You got the whole rest of the whole harbor. You got the um, racks down there with the kayaks on them, which I think is ridiculous. They can go to shipyard, they can go to land and lane, or they go to Gerard Park instead of being right there where the channel is. Because as soon as you, you launch your boat right there, where are you? You're in the channel. That's Didn't Harbor Management not a bad come point, up with yeah. a new idea for where they wanted? No. Yeah. <laughs> the three old water. We're talking about additional quiet. racks, but not relocating yeah. those yeah. racks yet. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if we start I, to, you know, I mean, you, you, that's your main thing. You've got sports fishermen, everybody goes down and yep. uses that ramp. All it is is one little yeah. view. That's all it is. Sure. With the and that's the only yeah. harbor we have. Yep. And then you've got the whole rest of the whole other harbor where you can put these racks and stuff for the kayakers. Mm -hmm. yep. And then something's got to be done with the kayakers and the paddle board. Safety, in the safety channel. perspective. Yep. And okay. especially with the swimmers. There's got to be a little bit more something going on. Because I've called the Marine Patrol, I don't know how many times. Yeah, the swimming is very dangerous. Yeah. That's very dangerous. So, yeah, yeah, I know they have the, the signs there, but people yeah. do it anyway. I've yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, signs yeah. against no the signs is no swimming, but people are in there swimming. And they're still swimming. I see it, yeah. Yeah, and I keep I pulling up, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I think the, I to Keith McMahon, has the kayaking always been a? Is there always been a safety problem with the kayak rack being there? I mean, the whole yeah. time the kayak oh, rack's yeah. been there, it's always been a problem. Before the racks yeah. were there, the, ca the kayaks yep. were there before the racks were there. Yeah, I see. it's it's a matter of parking, really. That's yeah. where people well, can park. Well, parking and that, and it's right in the yeah. channel. Yeah. As soon as you come out, they're right there. Right. So I mean, if you've got boats coming around the point, what's in front of you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's common sense. There was landing. Don't so go the over town. on the other side. I think the town was looking to prohibit parking on landing lane there for people, you know, for people yeah. using kayaks. So that's. Well, you got shipyard. You got yeah, land and lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody uses them. But the town Don't let them go over there. Talking about prohibiting parking on landing lane, which didn't seem like no, a particularly actually, good idea. No, that's silly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you got people, with, you know, with a certain yeah. amount of kayaks, what's the difference? You got ten cars there. Yeah. There's ten. There's room yeah. enough there for ten cars. Yeah, no, yeah it's much landing, better spot yeah, to launch. You know. All right. Well, that's great. No, we okay. Have good, good input. Thanks, Mike. Let's okay. continue the we, conversation. We got we some good to start. Good start tonight. Yep. Thank you. I'll keep in touch with you, Diane. Thank you. Okay. All right, Jim Walker. Yeah, I really want to thank you all for coming, too. Thank you very much. We need this dialogue more often, you know. It showed that we had a lot of stuff that wasn't getting communicated. So. Thanks. <laughs> well, Jim's not here. Can you also get the name of the guy with the Jason Danielle? Yep. No, he the, left. The blonde guy who left. Oh, that Pat, was Jim's been waiting a long time. Yeah. That was Ed McCluskey. Okay. Wasn't it? Was it? I don't, I I don't know. So. The guy who left, I think that was Ed well, McCluskey. Was yeah. Thirty-third year pushing. I think. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Okay. <coughs> Jim Walker from InterScience. I'm here for Clearwater and Lion. Thanks. Uh, Lionhead Beach. Um, I spoke with Lori and I sent her a letter saying that the dredging for this year uh, had to be done before January 15th. So the permit that you guys uh, issued last year has been used. The dredging is done. It's over. The uh, Army Corps wouldn't let them dredge after January 15th. So what we're asking for from the trustees is a permit for next year. And uh, we just got the DEC permit amendment 24th and it is for the uh, plans that are in front of you. The plans were uh, amended at the request of the Army Corps of Engineers to show dredging uh, ab about 50 feet outside of the rock jetty, a little wider and a little deeper. That's the whole ball of wax. Other than that, the dredging is, is pretty much the same as always. And we need a permit for next season. You don't need a permit for March. So this will be the first time that the dredge spoil is going to be divided between Lionhead and Clearwater. That's 100% correct. Okay. Uh, 
The idea is uh, to dredge more, uh, longer, wider, and deeper. And if they have more uh, dredge material, the, about the same amount of material will go to Lionhead. Okay. And about the same uh, volume as past years, like two, two, three, when I first started getting permits for uh, Clearwater, would go to the permanent spoil site of uh, Clearwater. Right. They, they have a spot, Lionhead yeah. has a beach erosion problem, so it's basically a little dune. Mm -hmm. And they, they had a little problem with uh, d uh, dark sediment uh, last year, so the idea is you put the, the push the white sand back, dredge, push the white sand back over top, and plant beach grass. Um, I met out there with Lionhead. Uh, well, I, the guy from Lionhead was here. Alex, I think, left. He left. Um, but uh, they've been part and parcel to the whole thing. So that's what we're asking for, one more year of uh, dredging uh, permits. Jim, would you be, again, using a long reach excavator approach with your expanded yeah, Pat, efforts? Pat Bistrian <coughs> bought a three foot longer one <laughs> in other years. So you're gonna get three And he's not the only days. one. Keith Grimes has one, and any of the marine contractors can rent them. He's not taking the sand, is he? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> you could ask Jerry that one. Yeah. I don't live out there. I have to. <coughs> uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Suffolk County has a million dollar budget for dredging each year. And the town of Southampton really struggles to get dredging done. Mm -hmm. And what you really have to do is use every option that you can come up with. Yeah. Multi approach, this guy, that guy, each job is different. I've been getting permits for the trustees in the town of Southampton since. Before, just before 2000, and it's very difficult to get permits, but it's not impossible. Even Army Corps can occasionally issue a permit. So you have really? your tricks? You have to use all your tricks, Pat. All your, all your knowledge. So they're not just relying on Suffolk County? No. Uh, they've relied on uh, Pat Bestrian and uh, Keith Grimes and Suffolk Crane, and I've seen uh, so so many different little options used for different projects. But no other, no private hydraulic dredging. Charlie Pound from Aqua Dredge Village, Doc from Port Jefferson. Yeah, Rambo has. We one. tried to we for Jerry's job. We tried to do uh, hydraulic dredging at Hog Creek, two hundred thousand dollars to to bring a dredge out. Mm -hmm. It's basically that would be one fifth of what the county budgets right. for right. dredging projects. So, to bring somebody out to do hydraulic dredging for small, smallish projects is difficult. Mm -hmm. Gotta figure out other ways to skin a cat. Yep. Yeah. Um, but each job is different, and uh, if you work at it really hard, occasionally you can uh, get things dredged and increase the water quality. Now, Lori put two other jobs of mine on the agenda, and I don't know if you want to hear about them or not. You're up here. Okay, Good. MMR is north it's 81 North Briar Patch Road. And uh, I was asked by the trustees to document the fact that that little walkway had been there prior to the moratorium, and I submitted air photos. Now, I, I didn't know that Lori was gonna put that on the agenda tonight, so if you don't wanna uh, talk about it, it's fine. Uh, we are at the he public hearing process at the village, and I do not have the permit yet from the uh, village although I have been told what to provide for the next month, and I probably will finish relatively soon at uh, 81 North Briar Patch Road. Um, okay. That job, different than Bruce Horwith, is uh, hand digging. Hand digging rhizomes works. Uh, we used it at Niederlander on Jones Cove, um, and we're going to use it at, at uh, both that job in 11 Chauncey Close. For 11 Chauncey Close, I was asked to submit a couple documents, and uh, I believe that we have them in. There was a, a letter of intent, and I believe there was also a written authorization to let a piece of equipment cross so they, they could dredge the mouth of uh, Georgica Cove. And I believe we submitted all that stuff. Um, so that's what you have. I did not finish with MMR at the village. I do have a village permit, 11 Chauncey Close. I ha do have a New York State DEC permit, 11 Chauncey Close. Uh, MMR, I was told by DEC, as soon as the trustees approve it, they will uh, issue 
their perm the state permit. Okay. With regard to MMR, I was looking at the, inf I didn't get um, delve into the actual file today, but I was looking at the information in this uh, agenda folder, which is your latest correspondence and the two document chasings you sent to us. Anyway, the aerial photos were attached. Okay. So I was just looking at the aerial photos and there are lines within the aerial photo and the, the location of the walkway seems to go from the waterway side of that yellow line to the landward side of that yellow line um, as it gets more recent, the most recent one. So I'm just wondering, I didn't know if that was a property line or if that was just a, a, a topo line or I'm not sure. Diane, without, you know, I didn't prepare for MMR. Okay, so that's all, that's all right. To the next meeting, I'll bring yeah. the air photos. I have a okay. high resolution black and white air photo that will show the the little catwalk is there at uh, yeah. in 1981. Yeah, and into the 70s or something, it was there. It's yeah. been there a long time. Yeah. Actually, but it if it's, that old. Yeah, if it's, it's, if it's old. on the upland and it's not in the waterway, it's, it's not, not something the, that would have been. It's not in the waterway. Yeah, so it wouldn't have no. been in our inventory no. anyway. It's, it's over the right. wetlands. Um, yeah. For what it's worth, the village is going to require some planting there. Okay. Jim Grimes was trying to encourage me to get Jeff Collet to plant plant materials there, and if he wants a permit from the village, he's going to have to. Okay. So that's a little different than some of the other jobs okay. that I've seen, and it's probably a good uh, step right. moving forward. On the and the only thing I'll look for then is is on the actual survey itself. If the walkway and the fragmite removal is all landward of the purported property line. Oh, uh, well, that walkway and the, the uh, that's in the water. In the water, it's, okay. It's beyond the uh, deed line. The walkway is. Yeah. But it's not it's not in the water, you said? No, there's, wet, there's wet. wetlands that go out probably 200 feet on the, the one side. On the other side, it, the shoreline is the water line. Okay. It goes like this. Okay. And over here, we have Phragmites that has been cut for years and years, and uh, what we're going to do is remove the rhizomes that are left, and what you'll have is a cattail marsh with lots of nice mm -hmm. diversity. That, okay. That's what will happen. Levin okay. Chauncey closes. Yeah. Uh, it's fairly similar. Okay. You, know, you can have access yeah. to go do your dredging project. Yeah. Right okay. across the guy's property. Remember, I think we asked you no that. No house yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got to do it quick. <laughs> 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 okay. Be a twenty million dollar house there soon. So Levin Chauncey Close is a vacant lot at this point? Yes. Oh, okay. Not too many vacant lots down there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, with regard to Hog Creek, I don't have a problem allowing them to pursue their dredging this year or in the next window. Mm -hmm. Same conditions as last time, same, you know, same everything is fine with me. Yeah, it looks yeah. good to me. Yeah. And the deeper dredging is great. Yeah. It looks more like for Clearwater and Lionhead Beach that we're going to have DEC and Army Corps permits that match and are good for 10 years. So I won't have to work to get those permits and they'll have to come and see you. Maybe right. they'll come by themselves. Yeah, maybe. Be nice. I mean, so it's yeah. Motion on it, that. Yeah. Maybe they won't. Well, is there an application well, yet? Yes, there is. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, is. they've just yeah. applied for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I have it here. I've looked yeah. it over. Diane looked it over. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're making a motion, Diane? Yeah. We've had it for a while because they we'll be submitted okay it making a motion. preemptively last year, and we looked yeah. it over then. Yeah, well, essentially, yeah. what you said it was going to be. We don't have Except a zoning a board of further, appeals a little permit. Deeper and That's what I was going to ask you about material. was, yeah. you know, I want to ask them about how it's going. Yeah. It, the DC approved the deeper dredging and all that, or that's looking good so far? Because I know you have the, yeah, yeah okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. I got it uh, So we will um, divide the dredge teach us your tricks. fee. Amongst the two associations, based on how much of the material <laughs> each is placing on their respective that. properties, <coughs> write that into the permit. That it's evenly split. No, it's not evenly oh, split. Oh no, it's, no it's, it's right. It's um. Right. Oh, I forget what it is. But. Yeah, but the. They're going to put about the same amount as they always did at Lionhead. Uh, right. Okay. I, excuse me. It's, it's in do here. Yeah. About it's the same amount at Clearwater as they always did. The yeah. extra amount that's going to come out should go to uh, the Lionhead side for uh, Beach Norseman. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I think I think everybody will be happy with it. So do I have a second? I'll second the motion, yeah, absolutely. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
That was good. easy. That was worth the wait. Yeah. 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 Jim, uh, <laughs> with the frag muddy, so are you having the same problem, Bruce? Is with the, I mean, has the DEC uh, told you that no, same thing about? You, absolutely not. You generally hand dig anyway, so you don't have no, the same. We do every job. Can you give us every, your two cents on that whole thing. The, the two cents is is complex. Uh, I think, sense, Bruce, okay. I think Bruce is trying to be um, friendly and, and nice. Yeah, friendly and nice doesn't always work, uh, especially with New York State DEC and Mark Carrera. Um, <laughs> what a, what a, every job is different. In the town of Southampton, we cut it to three inches once in January or February. We rake out the thatch. So that, that sounds pretty good, right? You get it down to about this big. Sure. <coughs> Thereafter, we cut it to, to the ground and you do it four more times in the first year. Each year you do it a little uh, less, and in the, in the end of the five-year program that you get from the DEC, by the fifth year, you're supposed to be done. In the fifth year, if you're not done on our jobs, we try to go in and hand dig it. Hand digging is something that we learned about because we did wetlands buffers where there were phragmites that weren't wetlands, that were dry, and we had to remove them, or they grew in as weeds, and we had to maintain the vegetation buffers that we put in. Same thing with Japanese knotweed. Yeah, if I've you, done it with that myself. It, yeah, it's similar. Stuff out, it works. It has the big chunky roots that go horizontal, so it's similar. Actually, yeah. Phragmites is easier than yeah. Japanese knotweed. But um, yeah. the 18 inch thing we see in occasional permits that are issued by, by the state, and it's not even, and it could be on any pond. There's a, there's a pond called Fowler Pond, a Fowler uh, Road in Southampton, mm -hmm. and the grass is this high, and it looks like they cut it for a view, and it's a stupid project. Sorry, I have my opinions, it's just, it's, no, it's fair. It is worthless. There, it's basically a ma maintenance program, costs the people a lot of money, uh, and doesn't do much. What's a maintenance program that doesn't do much? Cutting, cutting it to 18, 18 inches. That's right. what I figured. It, it yeah. just really so you're mowing suggesting the lawn. It gives a like view mowing the lawn. and it doesn't yeah. give you much of anything. You're suggesting that it's not a blanket piece of no. an idea. It's just a project the specific DC, the thing DC they're handing down like, for that project. You, you're part of a governmental agency. Bureaucracy. Governmental agencies are people. The people at New York State DC are not even handed and you're gonna get a different set of circumstances from each guy. Bruce is an expert at that. To tell you the truth, we, the one for Martin, we steered to him because we try to stay away from common read projects. The only common read projects we do are for uh, the trustees, clients that we already have, or clients that are out of troubled jurisdictions. Troubled jurisdictions include the ZBA. Um, they are very difficult to deal with in terms of common read. So if Bruce succeeds here, he may very well have a trouble getting in natural resources special permit. I think if you asked him, he'd probably tell you the same thing. But uh, with the DEC, if you're stuck getting an 18 inch permit, you probably need to go to the uh, head of uh, uh, natural resources, which is Rob Marsh, but also the Bureau of Habitat head is uh, Andrew Walker. And he's, he's a very hardworking, sincere person. And I think if Bruce uh, was encouraged a little bit, maybe he would succeed. Cutting it 18 inches, kind of, that's a, that's not a real productive way to. Yeah, it's mowing the lawn. Energy uh, mowing time, the lawn. Yeah. The longer the grass grows. You know, if you want to tell the people they can cut, cut down the wetlands for a view, that's, I guess that's. Uh, not what we're here to do, yeah. I think they would, the people would do it, but the question is, are you doing anything at, at all? Right. It's right. really a maintenance permit that's kind of expensive. Uh, when we first got cutting permits, we didn't like them because the first cut cost like 10,000 bucks. But thereafter, it's a time and materials job, and the cost gets less and less, and it starts to work. So the fact of the matter is, encourage people to cut it down to here, mm -hmm. and then when they get it down to there, cut it down to there. And yeah, that seems to make the most sense. It does work. Of course. And it, it works fairly predictably. Now, hand digging, is you find it easier once you've cut? Is that what's, what happens? I mean, the roots I, get worn out and then it's easier it. to pull up? I think the four-man crew probably <laughs> thinks it's pretty hard. Yeah. Um, the, the hand digging removes the problem much quicker, yeah, much sure. more thorough. And then after that, it's kind of weedy. Mm -hmm. it's, right. it, it's fairly costly, but it's, it's less costly than a maintenance permit. A maintenance permit um, ends up costing you more across a, a longer mm -hmm. period of time.
If you get the, a permit to dig the rhizomes and pull them, you actually do better. It's, it's a better project, it works. It's not for every job, it's not for every jurisdiction, but we've had pretty good success with it. Well, thank you. We'll, we'll yeah. talk to Bruce more about. Yeah. It's interesting to see both, you know, yeah. have you both talk about your methods and mm -hmm. see the differences. We, we'll keep star staring him the hard jobs. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm on. <laughs> I'll help people keep applying for him. <laughs> thank you, Jim. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's move on to new business. Uh, Akabonic Hog Creek, letter from uh, Pete Weiss. Yeah, Pete Weiss sent us a letter uh, regarding his observations in Akabonic over the years. Uh, he's a scientist, um, a great naturalist, and he, he's just noticed, you know, fiddler crab species that are more susceptible uh, from the, the researchers out there to, to, to chemicals like this and really seen them decline. He used to see a lot of these fiddler crabs in the area when he was you know, just years ago, and not so much anymore. I don't have the letter in front of me. Can we, um, if it hasn't been CC'd to vector control and natural resources, maybe forward that along to them? Just as like their FYI, they can keep it in their files? Mm -hmm. No, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, a sure. pretty good letter. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good writer. Another, good, good another perspective on the methaprene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So most of what we're hearing from the public yep. is, is pretty anti methaprene. Yeah. Um, so that's all there is to say on that. I mean, I can talk more about, you know, the trial area and how that's going if you want to hear about it now. Sure. Um, as well, okay. Um, so, because at this point it sort of applies to Akabonic, um, in looking to find a trial area for a no-spray trial from vector control, um, we're trying to identify a spot that has marsh that's, that's sprayed uh, usually and is town owned or, or owned by us so that we can uh, have, you know, three years of no spraying in that area and, and monitor the effects of that. Uh, NAPIG was the first option that I thought of and a lot of people thought of. Akabonic was also another major consideration for that. So uh, NAPIG has the big southwestern marsh between like the Pond of Pines down to NAPIG Meadow Road, um, but that's almost all state land, I realized. When you look at the tax map, it's, it's mostly all state parcels in there. I talked to Vector Control about that, and they weren't too thrilled with the idea of doing the trial on state lands, and we'd have to probably well, talk to the state, state about state it. state wouldn't agree to it. The state anyway, probably wouldn't agree sure. to it, yeah. So um, then into looking into Akabonic, um, the, the marsh on the western side of Akabonic, like the northwestern part there, is there's nice marsh there, and the homeowners around there are some of the people who have actually contacted us and been supportive of the, the no trial idea. We've been had people saying, please, you know, get them to stop spraying around, around our area. So. Um, so that's an area where there's a lot of support from the homeowners, and the land there is uh, town or Nature Conservancy owns some land there. Um, so I did call TNC, and I got to talk to Paul DeAndrea, who was pretty thrilled about the idea, and it seems that they'd be very supportive of letting the trial happen in that area uh, over their lands, and, and also includes town lands and private lands there. Wh so. Where is this specific, Tyler? Um, like just on the east side of Springs Fireplace Road, when it pa like by the Paula Krasner House and that kind of area. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's you know a lot of TNC land over there, yeah, but uh, people there are pretty supportive of that. So that's that's where I'm at now. Yeah, that's and, fine. Uh, yeah. All right, good direction to move in. Yeah. So if anybody from the public has comments on you know the, the western side of Akabonic Harbor, uh, between the harbor and Springs Fireplace Road, you know having a, a no methaprene, no spray trial for the next three years, um, let us know your comments, please. All right, this is good. All right, uh, Franey, 107 Gerard Drive, requests from the building inspector. I think that's a matter of just reviewing the file to ensure all the conditions of our permit have been met. Mm -hmm. And if so, we can notify the building inspector. Probably he wants to issue a CO. Okay, so we'll pass that on to that committee. Mm -hmm. um, and me. And you. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, P. Lenahan, 211 Kings Point Road, notice of completion. Yep, I think we should do the same thing, review the file, ensure that all other conditions of the permit have been met. Mm -hmm. And if so, we could always, you know, preemptively notify the building inspector. Okay, <laughs> okay. great. 
And this is long. Dobris at King Point Road, application for NRSP to demolish a structure. That one didn't appear to have anything that would be within the trustee's jurisdiction. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. ask that. yeah. I don't think there's any structure attached to this particular property. It didn't sound familiar. The tax map was um, familiar. That, Not sure. That is my, uh, my firm is handling that. It's a, de a demolition for the sale of the property to the town. There's no structure attached to it in the waterway. No, 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 no dockage or anything like that. And that property is yeah. being bought by the town to keep by the as town. an open space. Yeah, it's park. right at the head of, uh, of Hawk Creek. Great, so it's like a re Next to an existing town. Renaturalization yep. thing? Okay. Okay. Yep. Excellent. So that should be pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're. All right. That. Beaches. Uh, ZBA public hearing notice, application of R. Lang, 123 Marine Boulevard, mm -hmm. construction of a swimming pool. Although the swimming pool is outside the trustees' jurisdiction, I might just recommend if we could send a memo up to them, just saying in general we we we, we wouldn't be in favor of allowing too many poles along our dune line yeah. properties. Is it unless, near you know, dune? I think so. Yeah, it's on. The, yeah, Lang is on the on the on the ocean side, on the ocean. Yeah. Um, and also just if they have to, maybe we could just recommend that any and all mitigating measures for the draining of the pool and the right. chemicals they use in it could be put in place. Anybody have a problem with that? Uh, I, I, I'm supportive of sending them okay. a memo well, saying we're not a funding it where they're like, if draining the pool yeah well where they're, they're gonna dig it out they're not allowed to drain it outside yeah. uh, well, they probably have proposed uh, leaching pools is that right. what they're called or right. something like that yeah any new okay. construction is the requirement yeah okay um georgia capond Georgica and Ponds, ZBA notice of hearing, application of house on the pond for a dock, mm -hmm. et cetera. If this has not been in our um, inventory of structures, I would not just allow it to be approved by the village without our you know, review. If they wanted to apply to us, I might be willing to consider it, but if this is not, like if they can't prove that this is predates 1984, the structure should be removed. Pond doesn't need any more structures. The name, of course, doesn't sound familiar, but House on the Pond is. This particular. Well, I should probably do a site visit and see what's going on. Yeah. Trying to get down there this week. I think the hearing is relatively soon. Is it on the 27th? <coughs> no, we're beyond the 27th yeah. now. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. We should just notify the village CBA anyway. They can't approve a dock on our bottom land. Yes. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this can't be done without trustee permit. Right. So is this an application for a house and a dock? The 27th, it's already. That already third. happened, yeah. I think house on the pond is what they call a property. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so like, I mean, maybe if we could find out the previous homeowners' names, we might have it in our files. Mm hmm. Yeah, it doesn't sound familiar to me at all, yeah. So. I'll get down there and do a little research and report back at the next meeting. Okay. All right, uh, the next one, application for A. Banner, Fragmati Control 106, okay. Briar Patch. Is that the one? We have that one here. It's, it's a newer application. We have not fully vetted it out yet, so okay. that'll be part of the several. We we'll have, have one visit with Bruce. We have the Bannard property, and now we have the house on the pond as well. So this is LPS. We get some site visits done and get some photography and report. <coughs> and there's a lot of information on Bannard in the file. They've had permits in the past. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lazy Point Nap Peak application of. John Eastman for renovations, lot 13N. This is a house down on uh, Lazy Point, and if anybody cares to see this, I have it. He's mainly putting 
Um, the part that would concern us is windows, and he's going to get the um, building permits for that. Other than that, it's all indoor work, repairing, wear and tear. There's a 10-inch alteration on a roof, but it really doesn't make a difference to the right, profile. Right, it accommodates one of the windows. So he's going to get, I've talked to the um, man that's doing the work, he's got to get a building permit for that. Well, are we going to have a problem with this? I don't. Do no, know? it looks good. I, I went over the plans. You're going to require a dumpster on site? I'm Large sure. Require well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, pulling out windows and placing You want a lid on it and. Well, yeah, it's in the rules and regs, what it can, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but just so, yeah. Um, remind him of the. Yeah, remind him of the. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything um, different regarding that than it used to be? You know, when the, when the rules and regs changed, that no, any aspects same. of that changed? That was in okay, there. so he's that was, yeah. yeah, still good. To, still yeah, but he's a new reminding. he's a new tenant. Okay. Yeah. And he's so, raising the yeah. roof ten inches. I don't know if that yeah. matters. Along a shed side. Yeah, yeah. that's not good. The work, guys doing the yeah. work is not. I would think there's not going to be a problem, but since it's new business, maybe just give the other committee opportunity to look at it before we actually okay it. Okay. When's he want to do the work? Anytime now. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure he wants to do it quickly. Yeah, there you go. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure he does too. No. Especially if the windows are drafty. <laughs> oh, right. That's the yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, number five uh, Three Mile Harbor, ZBA public hearing notice, application of T. Walsh at 209 Three Mile Harbor, Hog Creek, Hog Creek Highway. Uh, construct an approximately 659 square foot addition and pergola onto an existing residence and to demolish an existing boathouse and construct an 1194 square foot two-story residence with the 326 square foot screen porch, 346 square foot second story deck and a 120 square foot patio on a parcel of land adjoining tidal wetlands and surface waters. Thanks. Yeah. So exactly we're gonna have to go down and take a look yeah. at it. Yeah. I wonder how many variances are gonna require. I see where 209 is along the road. I'm just curious. Uh, the following wetland setback variances are necessary where a 100 foot setback is required. Variances of 54.4 and 45.6 feet are required to construct the addition and pergola. 45.6 and 43 foot, respectively, from wetlands. They want to reduce the setback in half? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty big. That's pretty aggressive. I mean, a pergola is not that like invasive, but the addition is setback. Mm -hmm. and this affects mm -hmm. too, right? And then That's they need a variances of 26 feet, 40, and 45 feet are required to construct the second residence porch and patio. 74 wow. feet, yes. 60 feet, and 55.9 feet respectively mm -hmm. from wetlands. Wow. Uh, That's amazing. Second residence, a, what is it? A boathouse is now going to become a, mm -hmm. a residence. Yeah, that's uh, wow. the things you don't want to see on the water for now. Yeah. Both uh, houses are generally yeah. right off the shoulder. So. Right. What's that? Is this you guys? Three Mile Harbor? I'm not Three Mile no. Harbor, but sh she no. is. But I, oh. No, I'm not. Oh, you're oh, not? Who's no. Three Mile? No. Brian, <laughs> Brian is. Brian. I just comment on everything. Yeah, Brian. It's, two of it's Brian and Bill. Yeah. Okay. Like Tim, maybe. I'm always assumed to be yeah. on Three Mile Harbor, but <laughs> <laughs> I can be. I mean, if you want to like put me on there. <laughs> All right. And then an application from Lobel Jaszewski. <laughs> for a walkway stairway at 42 Hedges Bank Road. Is that a replacement? It appears that this that the one was with, there. Uh, put it in without the applicator? No. Oh. It's like 209, it's right next yeah. to the marina. That's apparently 209 right there. Oh, wow. Right where it's just paddle diva. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Amazing. Wow. It's over there in Hedges Bank. So it's yeah, it's on Hedges stairway. Bank. This is, yeah. They have a little stair. A little dock there. <gasps> look at that. All right, so the committee's we'll going to have to go look at that. Then. Who's the okay. previous owner? We'll have to look at that. Go with her. Here's a, so they want to replace this, or they want to? Or is it already in place? Well, this is a picture of it. So it's yeah, I yeah. assumed it was already in place, and they were trying to legalize it. 
No. So we gotta look at the files and see what they got there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it for new business. Can I bring up one more thing? Sure. All right. I know this is a long meeting, but a um, piece of business came up <coughs> recently, which involves us. Um, uh, a local citizen was uh, using his, his drone at the beach to do photography over public land, uh, and he encountered that there was interference, um, uh, like a frequency interference, basically, that blocked his drone from going over the water over the public right of way. Um, and it's right in front of the, the Maidstone Club, like, uh, like Egypt Beach. So uh, I guess he'd gone down there with some other people and found that uh, this, this interference wall juts out pretty far into the water. So that's off and you know, outside of their private property. And apparently it's against FAA regulations to, to have that kind of thing set up anyway. Um, so, you know, this is obviously the kind of a bigger issue that might involve the FAA or something like that. But uh, it also seems like somebody is basically blocking public usage of, you know, the space over, over our, I don't know if we necessarily own the air, yeah. we don't own the airspace over the, there, but, but it's, right. it's sort of interfering with a public right of way in my mind. Yeah. How does this work? That has yeah. never come up in No, house. this is definitely an issue ever. that I don't think the trustees yeah. have ever dealt with before, but. Um, but so they, 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 they have something that prevents somebody from Yeah, there's like drone, drone jammers over and stuff property. nowadays. You can buy mm -hmm. kind of a jammer to jam the, the, the signal from your remote control to the drone, so the drone Does that have an effect on anything else? Is it fly out of that. Wow. What if you have um, something flying along and all of a sudden it goes out of control? I think yeah, still that's why it's against FAA air. regulations. So mm -hmm. apparently this has happened, just what I've heard from this member of the public, that this has been happening. Um, and I guess he went down there more than once and, and showed people that this is indeed happening. Wouldn't this be a, like a police issue to begin with? He said he contacted the FAA already. Yeah. 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 How low does it go to the water? And yeah. I mean, I, I just, I'd imagine it, it, it our ownership in, in a dome around wherever the, the device is coming from, so. So right. it extends beach. out over the beach and extends into the water. He seems to think some. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm listening. Feet out to the water. I mean, yeah, it's a it, new legal it issue for everybody. Not seem like yeah. a trustee issue to me. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to find a trustee not. issue yeah. here myself. I, I would yeah. say that person probably needs to contact the FAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah please, definitely. But, yeah. Uh, so I think that's a stretch in terms of our jurisdiction. Sure, sure. It's a, yeah. it's, it happened on the beach, so I wanted to bring it up here. Is it, it really happened in the air above it, you the No, know, it did, but in, in, my, in my opinion, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a blocking of public, a public yeah. access, Ac access that, that does yeah. Yeah. You know, I happen on that. our property. Yeah. This sounds like yep. something that yep. somebody would invest in. You know, this yeah. sounds like something the police should look at. So I'm going to bring it up. I mean, it's a, they're going to probably claim it's a security issue or... I mean, I'd privacy love, issue. I'd love um, if we could help somehow, but yeah. um, I think yeah. that yeah, sounds got, like a, I would, but I a would federal just issue. Maybe who want our help? <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of. <laughs> I mean, whether they were accessing it from the beach or whether they came in from behind overland, they did the same thing. So I, I don't yeah. think there's a nexus. I'm nexus sure if it's stopping the beach, it's going to stop the use of one of those things off the public road. Probably, yeah. I'm sure you that, know, that I'm, frequency I'm that signal sure goes that out in a radius from the source. But yeah. what would that do to, let's say, you're a, you're an, you're an officer, with radios in your in your car, if, I mean, your what ambulance effect, association? If the FAA, if the FAA is banning it, they're banning it for a reason. Yeah. You this can't just send models. signals out. Yeah. 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 I would would just, we could, or the we FCC, just. I think the FCC actually has. I, I, yeah, but I, I think mean, both organizations are involved in this. Yeah. But. It, it sounds let us know what village. happens. But meanwhile, okay. No, just want to bring we, it up. We I mean, let the village know, along. the village uh, PD, just so they're aware of it. I yeah, I would think that the they. Village. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm assuming yeah. he's done that already, but I don't. Okay. No, I would just envision if somebody was flying a drone close to the thing. Yeah. Once it hit the zone of interference, you'd lose control, and the thing could, could drop. Through. Yeah, just drop right down. Land on a car or something like that. Or in the water. Or in the water. Yeah, or yeah, it's the Atlantic Ocean. Drone falling it could into land the water. A pond. Good. Yeah, it yeah, could land pond. in a pond, and yeah. then it's a problem, right? Yes, there you go. <laughs> it could be detrimental to the little If little enough falling, they could make a bridge. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to old business. It's getting late. Yeah. Um, trustee policies and procedures for shoreline fencing. Are we Still anywhere? Still waiting. No. Nope. I spoke with John today about this in Middle Highway. Um, remember, he... He, he broke his leg. He right. Broke his bone yeah. right. leg. So uh, 
you know, he missed some time. Um, I did talk to him directly today, and he said that <coughs> he told the town board that he's got a backlog of things to talk about with them. So he's hoping to work those, that backlog off in the next, you know, couple or few weeks. Okay. So he's aware of it. He's got to get before the town board. Okay. So that's the same answer for Middle Hill. Yes, right? same thing. Georgia Cove excavation we spoke about earlier with Bruce. Um, Sag Harbor Village recommendations on outside area of the breakwater. Yes, I had distributed an email to the board uh, regarding some meetings I attended over in Sag Harbor. They are putting together a management plan for the area outside the breakwater, uh, similar to uh, we might see in Three Mile in the Mooring Field for tackle standards and a registry for moorings, which I think is a good idea. It's a little bit loose right now, a little bit like the wild, wild east with large yachts coming in. And, um, you know, there has been some progress. Uh, I was hoping to invite another member of the trustee board maybe to attend one of their upcoming meetings with me and we could come back and perhaps put together a more formal recommendation. Uh, we're sending over a letter uh, with our board weighing in on that area uh, as we are part of the process as per the agreement we worked out last year with mm -hmm. them. So if anyone would care to join me at an upcoming meeting, I'd love to have you uh, mm -hmm. attend with me. Anyone yeah. volunteering? Just um, yeah. e like email us, let us know what it is, and I'll, I'll let you know if I can. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As, you know, yeah. Brian's on Northwest. Yeah. He's not here okay. tonight, so he might yeah. be a logical choice to yes. I think someone from the committee okay. would be a yeah, great Do you have choice. a firm date? Or? I would go, but... Uh, I, they have intra meetings. Their regular meetings are the same time as ours, so it's oh. a little tricky. Oh, okay. Sometimes okay. they'll make an exception and move right. it up yeah. a little bit. So, right. yep. Okay. The only thing I did note, looking at your list, was the the third recommendation was to limit some activities outside of that breakwater and along the beaches, mm -hmm. and that was like I would want to know a little bit more specifically. It's pretty vague, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It's still a, you know a yeah. general plan. Yeah. The idea was to maybe have. I think the general idea was to maybe have an area where you might see some habitat work going on and that may not be compatible with a more dense mooring field type grid. Okay. But I'll try to right. clarify that a little bit and yeah. give everyone a little better update. Um, um, I only, Mike, I have a little confusion on this. Are these ideas from you or from them? They were a consensus of everyone okay. at the meeting. So, okay. Um, I brought some ideas forward that mm -hmm. we've been using over in Three Mile in the mooring field. They have some mm -hmm. ideas from inside the breakwater. Uh, there are marine interests that want to see less regulation. There are private property owners who'd like to see more regulation. So mm -hmm. right now it's a bit of a melting pot. Okay. Now they wanted to use our pump out boat, right? They would welcome uh, more support there. Uh, they do have a pump out boat. One of the ideas that came up that I thought was pretty interesting was the idea of proactive pump out service where you are visited on a regular basis and more of a, like almost like a mandatory, you have to pump out your boat periodically. They should give us some of their mooring money then. <coughs> well, it's a possibility. Can you know what I mean? The idea of fees is one that's being discussed, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. Oh, we should talk to our captains and yeah. see if they can. Yeah, it seems like our time. are pretty busy. It's a, it's a long haul over there. Yeah. So. Well, we're probably not too far away from having a third boat. Third the boat. use of a third yeah. boat. Yeah. 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 A lot of Getting yeah. pumped. Yeah. Yeah, that we'd have to kind of work out some kind of logical arrangement because right, Southampton right. Town does you have. Just so Southampton have Town a does service that. form. Yeah, they don't want to just run they, over there and start should, doing it. We should get something out of it. I don't think you can. Yeah, um, look at grant money. Because the grant the money to buy it. You can't charge for it. Well, you can get the, yeah, but you can get the grant money to for using it too, you know, for well, we some could get of some it. money, so like Tim said, for the moorings over there. We used to collect mooring fees over there. Yeah, but it's actually our waters. <laughs> so. so, you know, and also we could have yeah, a like member of their, back, we could have a member of their committee come here. John mm -hmm. Parker was coming uh, mm -hmm. last year. We could invite him back if we'd like to get a Was it one of the things in there that the mooring, that, that the, any mooring fees collected would be used for the pump out boat and for other stuff like that? For some form of environmental yeah, some services. some sort of environmental services. Correct. That's, that's a discussion that has come up. So I just want to keep everyone yeah. in the loop on what's going on and uh, see if I can get Brian to join me at the next mm -hmm. meeting. Okay. All right, let's move on to committee reports. <laughs> at Cabanacog Creek. Um, most of them. We talk about the talk decision. About that. <laughs> I think most of them. <laughs> <just> <laughs> yeah, we're done with yep. all these, really. Martin, we did. Yep. 
And yeah. Clearwater Beach. Beach, we did. Good. All right, Beaches, Weprin? Yep, we're still waiting for a response from them. Um, Jim had advised them either, either, either. Wait for the rules, the law to right. change. Yeah. yeah. Okay, 101 LPL, LLC. Yep. yep. That one I know, uh, Jim has been down to the site and uh, met with the, with the uh, agent there. Mm -hmm. I reviewed the file and the application itself. Um, I do not have a problem with the dune restoration and the sand fence, um, but I do have a problem with the stairway. Jim did not. We did speak about it. Um, you know, outside the regular meeting, we talked about this application. Mm -hmm. um, but in my, from my perspective, it's huge. It's a huge structure. Um, going over the dunes going and over all that. The, dunes. Uh, the one where it goes and, down a couple platforms and, and they're going to raise it up more and everything. And also being extended like 14 yeah, feet. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, um, that's my only problem is the extension of it. It doesn't yeah. make sense at a time when we're often losing beach yeah. to extend things further out into the beach. Just yeah. is very backwards to me. Is it beyond the toe of the beach grass into the public beach area? But they, if they restore their dune and then they plant, mm -hmm. now they want to bring their staircase out to that out point. To it. So there's that push-pull. That's, with, one, of those, yeah, that's yeah. one of those situations that um, you're always And I do with. understand the DEC wants to see structures up above the vegetation. Right now it's very low. So do they have a stairway now at all? They have a straight stairway that comes down, and they want to raise it and then do, like, um, platforms. Do we need a picture with that drawing? It's, it's in the, yeah, it's in the file. Yeah, yeah. we had it last yeah. meeting. I saw it last meeting. Yeah. It's it's a it's or the a, one before that. you know I would rather go the opposite direction and say let's get something light and and removable so in the winter we take it away and um, if we have section. storms yeah the last section or or even the, feel that's about that. I mean, I didn't think to mention it when we were discussing it so he um, he will be here next he'll be here the next meeting. Okay, so it was the next two okay. weeks he was going to be gone then. Table this week. Yeah, so I would say okay. we just table it till Jim's back and, um, I want to you hear know. you two fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're enjoying it's that. everybody. <laughs> oh All gosh, right. Right. Well, that's something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Georgica, Fragmatic Control right. Apps. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. One Association Road. Uh, is still trying to work out the upland plan with, I believe, Mr. Brian Frank from mm -hmm. the town. Mm -hmm. And they don't seem to be making too much progress there. Mr. Ackerman is kind of also on the sidelines as uh, he's trying to figure out how he's going to approach the project. So those two are not really moving, uh, you know, very, very far, very fast. Well, so. do, uh, do we have to continue putting these on the agenda? You know, I think we might pay to wait until we get an update next time to put them back on. Or how long? How has how long have we been looking at them? Yeah, just I, deny I, them as sure. submitted if all this year and get it. Just deny them for a year, and then yeah. 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 yeah and they can reapply when they got their act together. Mm -hmm. I'll take a look at when yeah. the permits were submitted. Okay. And double check it. Okay. And I'll yeah. review with Lori before the next meeting. Okay. Chauncey close. And then. Uh, you know, Bruce is going to reapproach on a couple of these at the next meeting with regard to Hayes, with regard to Murphy. Uh, I believe what 15 about, Chauncey close. What about Gallo? And then Gallo, Jim and I uh, need to get over there. We have, I think, four or five site visits between now and the next meeting. That okay. Schedule. He, him being away, we weren't able to get to a couple of <coughs> properties this week. Mm -hmm. So and we'll be ready to uh, to move on these and have a more accurate discussion. Where's um, Pearson Lane? I believe that's off of Association Road. Past okay. Uh, All right. The small house. MMR, I think we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. And 11 Chauncey closed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Can you these can all. And then the, the, the one other topic real quick is just um, you know, trying to establish more cooperation with the village and the town on buffers. Mm. So there's more of a standard guideline that we're shooting at. Is it 50 <laughs> right. feet? Is it 75 feet? So we're having preliminary discussions and everyone's trying to you know, work together, but cool. there hasn't been uh, a lot of teeth to some of the general guidelines yet. So we're, we're hoping we'll see more 
cooperation uh, with the permitting process. Okay, with that's something that really partners. interests me. If you <coughs> sure want anybody else at the meeting or, or absolutely or someone else to help us brainstorm. Back up. With. Okay, cool. All right, sounds good. So Hook Pond, I mean, they've rescinded their application for the bridge. I hear. Yes. They pulled it completely. It, it's no longer a project. Did you ever go anywhere with the title search, Rick? Yeah, we. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Um, oh, he did. Paralyzed. What did he find out? Skipped paralyzed. No. Well, it's on the next page here. I got it. It's on the next page. I thought oh. we were on the next page. Present. Not yet. He skips. Well, uh, no, she's so asking about the on titles, the bridge. Yep. The titles, they they ever I thought we were done with three. I'm sorry. After, uh, uh, no, they they four. dropped the project. The, the mayor yeah, contacted yeah, just, me. Yeah, yeah. Did Chauncey close? But, uh, but, um, um, but I forgot oh, the Perel is there. No one from uh, no one from Maystone Club. Okay. There was yeah, a story. They were talking about an alternative. There's a story in the paper huh. also. I didn't see it. You did you carry it? Yeah. Star carried it. We started the title search. That's why I read it. So what do you do about that fault? Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Well, that, th that doesn't mean they're not going to come back again with a different idea, so we may want to be prepared. So you wanted to keep going? Well, what, I didn't understand yeah. that. I couldn't understand that title search result. Yeah, I, I should go back. I'll try to look at it and figure it out again. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense to go forward? Or? Well, Fidelity wound up giving me more deeds. I don't know if they charge us for it, but uh, they did give me more deeds, so I have to try to integrate the deeds with uh, there are some, the only thing that really helps is there in the early 1900s there are there were some, uh, what do they call them, um, atlases that were done that show you ownership at the time, kind of a little bit like the tax map would do today, except on a yeah. much more generalized scale. But they help you to show who owns land where. Now it isn't in the exact year as the deeds, but you can kind of see how the ownership patterns laid out, and. Um, you know, the, the bridge over Dunmere only was put in in the first decade of the, of the 20th century. I forget the exact year, but I do have the year. Um, you know, before that, this was an arm of the pond. So I have to see if I can figure out whether it looks like those owners on either side of that arm, did they, were they boarded by the pond or did they just include that arm of the pond? Right. That's the issue. Yeah. I'm not sure there will be a really clear answer. Do you think it would be kind of a nice thing to share the title search with the village, Rick? Uh, it's well, we should look at it first of all with the yeah, what it see shows what it says. Us. Yeah. Oh, if it shows that we don't own it, we may not want to share it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what it says. Yeah. Let me see if I can figure out what it says. <laughs> all right, uh, Perella. <laughs> Perella at 43 Turbell Lane, erosion control, core log uh, installation. Where is that located? Turbell, this That's is Hook up, Pond. Hook up under mm -hmm. number three up above. Turbell is off Ocean Avenue. I, I have not been down there. Okay. So, I so that'll go to committee. Got by me, but it should, should be looked at for sure. Well, it came in this, yeah. oh, December. Front sun on the pond. Oh, Erosion mm -hmm. cells. All right, and cooperation with village on buffers and project planning. I talked about that a little bit just now. Okay. We are, Jim, Jim particularly, and, and myself, you know, we're looking to establish some standards with the village and the town for up and buffers as part of the project. Okay. It's a great procedure. Well, mm -hmm. from Jim Walker's conversation, it sounds like they're already. There's movement on, forward. Yeah. There's some positive developments, so mm -hmm. it's very encouraging. Yeah. Okay. Harbor management, meeting results. Yeah. Uh, at the last meeting, we set a tentative schedule to start our derelict duct blind removal project. During the fall, we did identify quite a few derelict blinds that are within our waterways. Uh, so on uh, April 8th and the 22nd, those two weekends, <coughs> we're going to start the removal process, probably have some cooperation uh, with the town uh, as well to uh, help remove you know, the debris once we get it back to shore. So I'll keep you guys posted on how we're proceeding with that. And Jim had mentioned maybe you know, also doing a uh, Osprey perch where one of the current derelict blinds uh, is situated and being used by the Ospreys. So is the harbor management actually gonna get out there and 
That's okay. the plan. That's the plan. So yeah, it should what be a committee. Should, should be a good project. It's wow. a good group. It's a good group. Uh, we were also talking about uh, kayak racks, and uh, you know, during the last summer, we identified that Gerard Drive has a lot of random kayak storage going on. So that's an area that I think everyone is in agreement could use a new rack. And then at the end of Mile Hill Road, there's a lot of boats that are randomly stored uh, still into the off season. And I think that's another positive location for a rack. So I think those are two good locations to make an improvement because we, we do see some uh, erosion of the uh, upland areas from you know, all keep the random dragging storage. Them up, yeah. yeah, dragging them up, dragging them down. Yeah. So, um, How does the board feel about expanding to those areas? It seems like a good thing for people and for the environment in, in that sense, so I'm for it. Yeah. It doesn't get in the way of the fishermen no, or any other Yeah, as long access. as those spots aren't, I yeah. mean, there are already places where people are kayaking yeah. already anyway. Yeah. I was thinking that, you know, like Brian's on Northwest, I'd like to get his opinion as a second mm -hmm. trustee on Northwest. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if someone from Akabonic would like to go down and visit the yeah. Girard location, maybe take some pictures and, you know, collaborate a little bit with Harbor Management on a committee level. Okay. I that think nice with that one, I think we're also going to have to talk to um, the Nature Preserve Committee because part of that belongs, some of that area belongs to them and oh, the we should just talk to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. just to make sure. yeah I can yeah. bring it up at the next NPC meeting. That would be great. Are you on Akabonic also? Yeah, I am, so I can kind of Could you possibly take that on? Yeah, that's take fine. Take that on? <laughs> that would be great. You got it. Now, in light of um, what we heard tonight about the Akabonic existing kayak rack, uh, any any. Well, I thought it might take some pressure to, off to of that one location. <coughs> That's true, yeah. And most mm -hmm. of the boat traffic goes to the left around the, the, the shoal area that everyone's been talking about. And if some of the kayaks could be put to the other side and mm -hmm. out of the way of the boat traffic, it would On the other be, side of Gerard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. are yeah. we going to talk about eliminating some racks? At I don't think you're going to eliminate no, anything. You can. Not in, I know, not in this context, yeah. but yeah. No, we can know, not, not if we this year if we've already yeah. issued the permits. Yeah. But just, you know... Yeah. But if we provide other areas, the, the, you know, the, the usage might It'll balance out a little bit. Well, yeah. the, the yeah. thing is, the kayaks are already over the on kayaks the side. The kayaks were there before the racks. The yeah. racks are just a it's the same means thing. of controlling the but existing might, kayaks. Yeah, it might so. eliminate extra kayaks just being piled on. You do see Wait. kayaks laid around the racks. The People problem, just chain up. The problem to is, yep. right now, we have no idea who puts the kayaks at Gerard. Right. So right. when the kayak racks are put up there, we're going to have to put something on the racks to say you need to contact. Yeah, them. you need a yes. permit. Get a permit. Yeah, you have to right. get a permit. Yeah, it'll take a little yeah. time probably yeah. to get it sorted yeah. out. Yeah. But yep. I yep. think it's a, it will be helpful yeah. overall. Yeah. yeah. But just so um, you and the committee and trustees are aware, we did try um, to work with Suffolk County to get kayak racks um, at Northwest. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know, we'd be willing to um, install them, maintain them, implement them. If we could just be over on that beachy area, um, adjacent to where they put the new re the repaired ramp, right. and they just they had no right. interest. This would actually be in the outer yeah. outer harbor area okay. at the end of Mile Hill. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. And then also Landing Lane, we had tried there. Okay. We've tried Again. there before. Yeah. Hmm. Um, that would be another good spot. Yeah, would be a good spot, spot. Yeah. yeah. But we don't own the yeah, land there. We don't, yeah. 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 Look at, There's well, no yeah. beach. Right. Right. Also, I think there's yeah, just like Hill and Gerard yeah. Drive are two, two good places ramps, to start, so and then maybe we can share the ramps, experience yeah. with the mm -hmm. town board or other members of the Lane. 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 And I do believe that um, Sunset Cold Marina had put in some kayak racks and had made them available as a service at their marina. Which one was that? Sunset Cove. Okay. Yeah. So we had we had tried to let the pub make the public aware of that too. It might Maybe. be for us to reach out to them and see what the status is. Yeah. That. Yeah. I'll give them a call. But do we feel like there is potential or need to move the Laos Point rack away from the channel? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we gotta get the channel. Well, I think right now we've already conducted the permitting process well, we for this year. But yeah. This is there which is no place to move it. You <coughs> can't move it yeah. on the other side. That's where the pipe and blowers saw. Mm -hmm. There's no room. There's no room yeah. anywhere. Just up the road. Yeah. Those kayaks. The road? Those that kayaks were there for years yeah. before the. Yeah. Right. And you know, the conflict there, yeah, between yeah. people swimming and fishing has gone on for a long time too. Longer term. There's also like a five. There's technically a five mile an hour speed limit there too. So, it's a lot of 
a lot of factors. Yeah. yeah. I think getting the channel dredged out would be that's would help a lot. Yeah. That's, that's You're right. Yeah. Right. Do you want to go through the rest of these or okay. skip along? Uh, well, you know, dredging was pretty much I think covered right. earlier this evening. Uh, obviously, right. it's a, a important topic. And uh, dinghy dock. The dinghy dock. There is interest for a dinghy dock at the head of the harbor. Uh, it's not really vetted out, and I think it's going to require some cooperation with mm -hmm. the town. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be further developed, I think, before it's brought before the board. Mm -hmm. uh, do have a new member for harbor management, uh, Nick Pupo. I submitted his resume to everyone to review a couple mm -hmm. weeks back. He's a nice guy. He's a, he's a former member of the Coast Guard. He has good uh, marine services skills. He's done some dock building, et cetera. So I think he's Isn't like, he a seasonal marine patrol. Seasonal marine patrol with mm -hmm. Sag Harbor. Um, and I think he may now be part time with East Hampton also. But he's, he's a pretty handy guy, and I think he could be an asset to the uh, committee. I do have his resume here if anyone hasn't seen it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I printed it out and brought it. I, I you know, think it seems great. He's also he is a holder of a duck blind permit. He's familiar with the program. Uh, and, you know, he's fairly well rounded from a, he lives in Amagansett. Has the committee reviewed that? Uh, I have reviewed his application. Jim interviewed him as well. He was positive about it. Uh, I brought it up to the committee members. They did not elect to uh, interview him at the last meeting, but they said that uh, they would go with uh, Jim's and myself recommendation on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we did have their support of it. Well, did you want to make a motion? Or? I would just comment, oh. just um, but w if, if he is currently working with the town now, yes. just make sure that it, as the committee, like talking about um, kayak rags or, you know, that, that he's not inadvertently discussing those policies that he's then going to have to enforce. That would be the only thing he, he should be and you should be aware of okay. on that committee. Well, other than that. For but he Part said he time. just uh, might have got a job in the town uh, as well. I think so, also, so that yeah. would be the only thing he okay. should be aware of. Yeah. Okay. We'll other sure than that. that yeah. I, I would like yeah. to make a motion to approve him as a, a member of the Harbor Management Committee. I would committee. like to second it. All in favor? He does seem like an excellent addition. Yeah, I'm also concerned Aye. about Aye. possible conflicts mm -hmm. of interest, but definitely. Well, yeah. I'm sure he's well, not going to. I'm not really, uh, I'm not quite understanding where the conflict would be. Well, I mean, he's if, not going to benefit no, it's not like he's financially actually, for this. It's just. Yeah, no, maybe really, not. It's just that appearance. Yeah. You know, you just right. want to be above board. Yeah, and clear just, with everyone. Yeah. Clear it up. Yeah. I don't see, see it as a problem. Just okay. stating that. Yep. It's a good point. But I, well, I'm for him. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, now this one's a little confusing. This ramp again. Um, we got a notice of receipt of application from the DEC. I don't recall us approving anything. No, uh, uh, have, it's a long story, have, but it's not a long. Let, let me cut to the chase. If you want to? Tell. Can I ask my? Uh, I'm sorry. No, I just. Uh, my question is, how can he be submitting for? Uh, uh, submitting an application already when we haven't seen final drawings, we haven't made any final decisions on anything, we haven't spoken to the town about the project. There's a lot of things that have to happen before this can happen. This so is we, my so we say level we of annoyance. The final orientation, you know, we were looking for more input like Dan offered tonight, northeast, northwest, there are a couple of options that hadn't been finalized. We were, ta right. we were talking about bringing it in Possibly, that has we haven't gotten been. that answer yet. And that was my level of annoyance why I wanted to hold up. I saw the word survey on his latest bill. And I said, whoa, well, I haven't seen any survey. All we saw it was a, rough was sketch. a, a handwritten sketch. Hmm. Now, recently, have? this came in the email. Have you gotten a picture of this? Mm -hmm. This does not show your recessed um, idea either. Well, this is what he took to the D he took this well, to the this DEC just to see if they would. So is he basically just preliminary discussions of putting a ramp in that area? Or is this that is an applicant receipt of an application, and they came back with questions about it. Yeah, I think they have a lot of questions. They wanted like eel who, grass what, where, more. when, why. I think yeah. we need to meet with him, but you know these meetings are expensive, and we met with him, and we have proceeded no farther. Than when we met with him last. Well, I and did notice that there's many emails like 
Come on, get a move on what's happening. Yeah, yeah there's a is. bill here from him. Yes. yes that's but it's only for like a portion of like a twenty nine thousand dollar. Yeah, it's yes, like ten percent of the bill. entire bill. Right, I don't think it's a real bill. Did we okay twenty nine thousand dollars? That's yeah. how they bill. That's we that did? was the yeah. overall proposed well, for price for engineering and design. At that point it was a handwritten sketch. Yeah. And the other was for coming out and getting me to sign on his application to the DEC. And I just thought that my time is not worth that kind of money. No, you shouldn't have signed it because he submitted no, it. No, no, I want oh. him to submit it. Okay. I want him to get a move on. But what we want is an overall map of, of Lazy Point, of that Peg Harbor. He's done that. As you get a little closer, I don't have that. So I can assume he did. As you get a little closer, a little bit more definitive, and as you get right into the site, a survey, does he have all that? He's, he's not there yet. My understanding is that's the next step that he's going to take, and that will require another site visit so that the specific location is decided. So this, my understanding, Jim had a detailed discussion with him about where this bill. Mm -hmm. So he, he felt that he had conducted you know, this work and that this work, the invoice may not have been worded as well as it should have been. I agree. And that point you. was also brought to his attention that we need a very clear and accurate bill going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, you know, he's only billed us for approximately 10% of the overall project. Mm -hmm. And um, um, that's also the scope of work document if anyone would care to look at it. And I have an email so, from uh, Jim, who's one third of this committee. And, um, he does also recommend that the bill paid. He is, Jim is in favor of approving this bill, having the next meeting where we determine exactly where the ramp is to be located, and then get the detailed sketches that Pat is referring to. So that would be the process next going step. forward. Mm -hmm. And we would need to make sure that we have very specific documentation and invoices for anything beyond this 10% commitment so that we're all perfectly clear. I know, I know the trustees have expended funds in the past for like placing the rip-wrap rocks along the side of the ramp, try to prevent the, you know, the undermining of it. Have made a lot of recommendations to the town for, you know, cleaning it so it's not so slippery, things like that. But this is, this is not trustee property. This is a town ramp. Town's paying for this. <laughs> Where's the 29,000 coming from? No, it's it, we were the design. We agreed. The town was the ramp project, the construction. Yeah. That was the arrangement we entered into. Remember, we, we get to choose where it goes. Yeah. And we asked nice. for a letter from the supervisor to confirm that thing. You had asked him to provide okay. a, a written copy. Okay. So this is part of it's our. Yeah. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was. We were going to. Okay. We would. We would okay. supply the design, and the town would commit to building it. Okay. That allowed us to have some say in it. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I don't think it's an unreasonable dollars in meetings. I don't think it's an unreasonable position for us to be in. To We're way beyond to that. Get no, I'm, I'm, so to get, you know, moving along. Okay. I realize they, they need to earn some money to do the project. So I think it's a reasonable amount. If he was asking for half the amount, I would say no. But okay. for an additional five percent, we paid five percent. This bill is for approximately another five percent. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, I would just kind of like to see some hustle going on yeah. i think yeah it's going to be ready by the season no. well and that application no. should be submitted the design, by the design the town, will probably not be ready. this application has a lot of for the a lot of questions application should be submitted on behalf of the town not the trustees mm. for the ramp what yeah leave it alone no i'm not going to leave it alone it's a town ramp we're assisting the town i'm okay with that the town gets Who the permit it's to replace the ramp? It. but it's, it's going on our bottom line Part of it is, I know, yeah. but the upland portion. You'll know the whole. Oh my oh, God. Uh, <laughs> we're on. We're on. Um, trustee land. Yeah, all the state way up owns trustee. a tremendous amount of land there. Yeah, we, they, all that's trustee it's land. Still going to be trustee all land. Trustee land. Trustee land. I think the inventory for the ramps yeah. that was a trust town ramp. They may yeah. make because yeah. they yeah. did the because they did the construction. They may claim ownership of the ramp itself, but that land is trustee land. So now it'll be our ramp. If this goes. Right. Like it's going, all that right? trusty I mean, land. Then why did we let the, it why did we the, let the county land. fix the ramp in Northwest? Why do we let the town that's fix their, the ramp again? That's their again? property. The no, county ramp is. That's, it goes into the water. That's trusty waters. 
but much of it is the upland portion. You were referring to the upland portion. In so where's the upland uh, portion at the Lazy Point ramp? I mean, yeah. I think we need to that's get that Gan Road. To, that's townland. Yeah. As to vet this, I want to hear what the, the locals have to say about it. I want to hear what we have to say about it. I do not want to stall at this point. Okay. Well, all I really have to say is that if you look in here, all that there's like four proposals of how to do it. They all involve removing the existing ramp and then no. putting a new. No. No. I'm going to leave that there. That, well then, why? Yeah, we all agree to leave it that there. Okay. 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 Just yeah. making sure. I'm just looking at this. First time yeah, we've seen it. Sure it has four yeah. diagrams. You know, uh, proposing to remove it. So just making sure we're not, you know, spending money for this guy to make plans that we're not going to use. <coughs> no, I agree with you, Tyler. All right. All right. I understand. You know, that. I mean, just, uh, I'm all for you know cooperating with the town on this and, and having a, uh, having us own the ramp in the end. I mean, that's that's great and all, as long as it's not a big liability issue. Yeah. To own to. So. I as long as they put it in the right. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah, and it feels like we know where we want it to go. It seems like we want it to be so on the east yeah, side Jim, of the Jim ramp. reviewed, Jim reviewed all this stuff, and he's well, happy we don't with know it. that yet. Yeah. One I think the matter before us now is just whether we're going to pay the bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think we're no, to well, my, my question is why is there an application before the DEC? Yeah. Right. Do you remember originally I asked that? I said, I'm a little confused. We've got this. We, we just don't seem to know definitively what he's going to do. We don't know anything. You all yeah. said this is the way it starts. And it gives the DEC But something. not applying the application, not submitting the application. I wouldn't think so. The, the application, I mean, the no. first question I want there is, is the meets and, and bounds and oh no. everything else. He, so. he, when I spoke to Jeff, he made this sketch, which has two different ramps on the sketch. Right. One oriented this way, one oriented that way. He was going to have an informal conversation with the DEC to see what they preferred. I spoke, DEC called us, I spoke to them, and in that conversation, they said that they didn't care about the orientation of it. They wanted to know about the eelgrass yes. beds. <clears throat> But there was no application submitted at that point. Has this thing got a number? So I just don't. Yes, it has an application ID number. Do you want it, to it was get it? It was, it was submitted December 8th. No. Second bill? No, no, no. The bill gets paid. I just don't. Yeah. What the hell is he submitting? The first thing is, is they want the site plans need to show the dimensions of the existing ramp. The size of the ramp is increasing. It almost seems like he wanted to put a placeholder. This looks like the they state. they want to. Okay. This is like Maybe. this is like it was an application to put a to to replace to put a to replace the ramp in that area. The last thing I sent him, which was a kind of a. Yeah, we Justify this and let's uh, let's take a look at it. He answered with, "It looks like they're going to move this thing right through." And I said, "I am not interested in hurrying as much as I'm interested in exactly what's going where." This is asking for. Uh, no, we so I think, as again, as I said a while ago, we need to get him out here. Yep. When, well, when's Jim coming back? He, you say you had a detailed discussion with him about this. Oh. Next week, sometime. Yeah, so we can catch before the up next on meeting, it before we'll, the we'll next meeting. Let's get it all nailed down. Yep. Do you all want right. to pay the bill now? Yep. Well, or wait. I think we've agreed to pay the bill. We're going to get to the bills at some point mm -hmm. here. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, website. Yep. Um, John from Hampton's Web Design has completed the general design of the new website. Tyler and I have some decorating to do, for lack of a better term, with some yeah. updated photography and. But it's a whole new ball game with the website. It's so be it's, it's a really nice website built on a Word, WordPress platform, which is a very powerful and very widely used platform. So I guess the, the new term is called future-proofing your technology. So the website should have a lot of longevity, which is great, and we should be able to make some nice updates to it in the future. If anyone would care to come by the office and see it sometime or view it from home, I can share the credentials with you to do that. And uh, Tyler and I will be working on it going forward. So we should see the new site up in the next 30, maybe outside 60 days. So for now, the old site will still be there. Uh, you know, the other one's being built, and once it's built, it'll be kind of swapped out for the old one on the whole new site. But for now, the, the, the current one is still accessible and usable. Okay. 
Uh, Three Mile Harbor, Griffin. Pre-existing stairway without trustee permit at 60 Hedges Bank. We sent him an application, but we haven't heard anything. Okay. Can I ask you a question about that stair? So this is on Hedges Banks. Yes. Is the stairway touching the beach or is it just on the bluffs? Uh, we won't know until they submit an application. <laughs> well, they don't have to submit an application unless it's on our land. They should submit an application so we can make a determination if it's on our land. But it's pre-existing. Do we have? Uh, it appears to be on our land. Eyes on it. You have a survey. Right so on television. Can you pass that to Rick? It extends onto the beach. Yeah. Don't rip it out. Do we know the um, previous property owner's name? Probably not. What do you think? Simple. We have a file on Griffin. Oh, we do? Okay. Yeah. Have they done any bluff repairs? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, we can take the file. Okay. They indicated it's okay. pre existing, so do we have a reason to think it was built in recent times? It would just depend on the on-site to see. We if you don't make them submit an application, they have a legally pre-existing structure. Right. Unless they propose, they're proposing to repair it, or like who's calling it? Who who determined it's pre-existing? We don't know. Their 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 survey labels it. What's the word you know on there? Pre-existing stairways, or pre-existingly permitted, or something like that. Uh, property stairs previously approved, is what it says. But we don't have anything. So we should look at, if Lori yeah. says we have a file, we should look in there. Maybe well, you look in the building computer. department records, too, and see if there's any record right. of when it was built. Right. Yeah, we better right. do that yeah. first. Get the building department. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, Rick. Because they'll have all the permits on record. Okay. All right. Payment of the bills. Then rip it out. North Fork Water Supply, 47.94. East Hampton Star, $7.08 and $120 for a total of $127.08. Herzog, Faller, and Schaefer, CPAs, $2,100. Staples, $69.92. Savick and Murray, $1,637.20. Okay. Motion to pay the bills. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, renewal of another certificate of deposit, uh, account ending in 5679. I make a motion to renew it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes. Okay. Do we want to do this tonight? Well, I submitted. I submitted my recommendations. That's why I'm asking if you wanted to stay here this What's, late. Yeah, I don't yeah. cable until next week. I don't know. If, uh, I didn't get them, so I had to. Uh, okay. Rick told me that you'd made some changes and got yeah. them to him because uh, he asked you, but I never got okay. them, and I'm on the committee too. So I, okay. I would appreciate it if you make changes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, I sent him a lorry thinking, and we talked. I thought yeah. they had come to you, so I apologize. In the okay. Sure. If you want to yeah. CCS, yeah. we'll yeah. go ahead and yeah. do that too. We know. Yep. We know. So yeah, we definitely want to collaborate with you on them and. You know, so I, it's I table to that your the editing is very detailed yeah. and very thorough, Three which cents. is great. Um, and the, the one comment I would make is it, it appears that the spirit of the minutes that we've structured on this board's tenure is a summarization of each topic. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not verbatim, no. uh, you know, recording of every word that's stated. Right. And Sometimes it seems like we're almost reinventing the wheel. We're getting so detailed that we're taking a summarization and re-summarizing it, rather than if it's mistakenly where it's Tyler instead of Rick, I understand that's a very valid edit, and, and the level of detail that you put into this is appreciated because it would certainly catch that. Mm -hmm. But because of the availability of the video, you know, Lori's putting this all down in her version of a summarization. You're kind of re-summarizing it, and thus, that would then require another effort by Lori to then recapture the summary again. And it seems like we're putting a huge a resource commitment into the minute process under that process. 
Yes. And yeah, I, I, I just feel like yeah. you have all this skill and talent to bring forth on all these important topics mm -hmm. that come up on these meetings, mm -hmm. and we're we're kind of drilling yeah. down with a jackhammer when we need a, a screwdriver. Yeah. No. See, I don't see it that way because many of these are um, that. edits that will be very important to if that um, tape is not available. Why wouldn't um, it be available? Some, I don't know, but this is we a written have, we document. We get two copies of every this, meeting. This is, a, this is a written formal document of the trustee meetings. And, you know, for example, um, if, if, you know, the edits are to specifically incorporate verbiage that, you know, refers back to what's in the, in the, in the, you know, no, I don't see them as 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 re-summarizing them. I see them as taking a word, um, you know, the lifeguard association at the beach on Marine Boulevard and saying it's on the beach near Mar Marine Boulevard. That's an, that. It's, it's the prepositions. You don't yeah. like the prepositions. It's, let me, not let me, an English um, major. If, if excavation, yeah. you know, something. You know, these are Let me give you an example. Can, can I give okay. an example of what my problem is, I guess, here? Which one? Which um, all right. Yeah. Go to 20, this September 26th minutes. Um, okay. uh, you know, um, there's some changes, like Rick said, that are meaningful, and they change the meaning, and it's you know, it can be important. Um, but some are just seem kind of inane, like the, like this one uh, is just changing Lori's voice and her wording and her, her word choice. In number nine, um, I actually looked at the tape. Uh, it says the clerk reported Mr. Horwith hasn't made any progress with the DEC application. Um, Mr. Horwith requested an on-site meeting with DEC. Is how you, what you changed it to? You changed it from Mr. Horwith requested uh, a meeting with DEC on-site. A meeting with DEC on-site versus an, an on-site meeting with DEC doesn't yeah, change why? the meaning whatsoever. And I'm just—it just kind of—it's uh, Lori's, Lori's writing them, so her voice is is her own writing style, you know. And when you have a right. secretary that you hire to write the minutes. Uh, um, and, and to do all the other great stuff she does, um, you know, you, the minutes are going to be written in her voice and her writing style. We Laurie, can't impose. How many years have you been doing Im the minutes? Impose someone else's writing style. And Laurie, on, on how many years have I been amending and correcting the minutes? Okay, Laurie and I have been working together for a long, but long time. But that doesn't mean okay. that it was right. That doesn't mean it was right. I just oh. think, you know, if we didn't have the video. It's and just changing it around to the way that you I'm want. I'm just saying, I looked in the oh video and. Oh my God, and, and excuse me. Mr. Horwith said being, um, meeting on site, so you don't change it to an on site meeting. It's I'm, pointless. Okay, I'm not okay, out of okay, line. I'm, sorry. I'm tired I'm sorry. of it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, in that one particular instance, Tyler, maybe that's correct. But many, many of the other ones are. I, I totally agree. Some of them are that, useful, you know, definitely. Clarifies what the discussion was about, where it was inadvertently left out. Somewhere, like I told you, there well, was. Those are important. There those are important. A, but, yes. Diane, there's okay. a on every so, line of the minutes. Yeah, like if we accepted all these changes, then Lori would have so much work to do putting this all back. And we're essentially. Actually, actually you know, I've already done it for her. She has, she has to go has back to and change. No, it. no, we don't she like some of these more changes more. that you make. Right, but they're I'm a sorry. waste of time. I'm sorry you feel that way. And and, and again, you are not an English major. I'm not so an English major. You are not. Okay, I'm not. I can make mistakes too. Um, so, I'm no, just. You I'm have on the great committee. Grammar, I was, clearly, I'm just. Exactly, and I just find that you know what I propose here makes the minutes. You know, appropriately and right. the, the amount of time. And you all don't agree, and no, I get no, that no. now. But you know what? I was elected to be a trustee, and I'm going to keep doing it. But and if you don't like them, you don't like them. Just look, please give me a chance. Our secretary is a human being. Yes, I know. She puts a lot of time and effort into mm -hmm. these. And so do I. And and she gets frustrated. She gets hurt. I know she Freshly does. Hurt every I know time. she does. These but she wasn't nice. getting hurt when I was the clerk, and I was working with her on these. Yes, she was. Thank you weren't you working was. with her on these. You were going in the office no, no. by yourself no. and then handing them to she her was, to reprint. The wounds are still there. So no. you weren't no, working I mean, with her. Well, it's, no. clear, it's clear she's no, upset. So. You're wrong. It's clear she's upset. You know, here's that's, the other thing. The amount okay? of time. Lori is a hired employee. I understand that. She's doing her job. I'm the elected official. I'm the one that has to stand behind this in right. the future when it's taken to court, right. when it's and taken to, from the public. That's reading. Again, they're not going to read that. They're going to look at the and video. That's why we went to the video we today to the at video. length to look yeah. at what was being said, what was being recorded, yeah. and what was being changed. And that's when it became very clear that it was a re-summarization. 
It is not a resummarization. I don't care. Just, Tyler's, Tyler's example. Right. It's okay. I'm just. Okay. Well, look. We did. I felt like it was nice to go to the video and, and see how it compares because my concern was that I understand why you want to change things to make the meaning come across better. But if it's my concern is that the stuff that people actually said verbatim was getting altered, and I, we can't. But we that don't happen. have any verbatim anymore. I'm just saying. Some of the stuff is. This is just grammatical. Some some most. of it is grammatical. the way someone said something like Miss. Mr. Horwith did say he, I'm request, I requ requested an on, uh, a meeting okay. with DEC on site. On -site. Okay. So I know it's an annoying example. I won't, I'll stop bringing that All example right. up. I'm All just right. saying he actually said that, and you changed it to the other preposition. I'll bet we All could. Right. Now, so bet right. you, Lori, if she right. tried hard, couldn't make it as bad as the Dongan patent is written. <laughs> so let's lay it as so, colloquialism. Well, is, is there a way we can come to a middle ground where we, we do some of this together or something writing offline? Yeah, and just, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to get to a point where it's a little yeah, more efficient to get these. Years. There are important changes that, are, that come up. So I, I you know, address Not changes, that. I mean, address, come on. We got no. three, three <laughs> colors going here. Yeah, because so when I did it without colors, everybody said it's too confusing. So I thought, you know, anyway, anyway, obviously it's not going to really matter what I, it's going to matter, but um, I've, I've submitted my recommendations and um, I could take another look and if it's a simple preposition change, put it back the way it was and I'll forward them to my co-committee people. There are a couple things in there that I agree should, should have changes. But, but to go to this extent is a waste of your time. It's a waste of our time. I'm sorry you feel that way. But it's an well, insult to Lori. I'm sorry she feels that way as well. Okay. It is an this insult is to me. This it, is, is, it definitely is. Yes. Is this is my job as a trustee as I see it. Yeah, but it's, it's, the, it's, it's the job of well, the trustee's is. board to approve the yes. minutes or not. It, the, yes. There's yes. more to this yes. board than these than damn the minutes. minutes. I know. And, and I no know. wonder your board didn't yes. get anything done because oh. you spent so much time on this crap. Excuse me. Well, Excuse that's me. how I feel. That's, and that's why that's I ran. Really, really so why don't we table you know how it makes me really feel to have Lori, you say what you, you know just what? said? I want to just tell you that in public that you say that you had to correct my minutes for eight years or 20 years or however. No, I'm sorry. It's an insult. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I know what I'm doing. I didn't say you were. It right. is an insult. That's really unfortunate. I'm sorry you feel that way. I do. Very I much. would say for the record that I feel very much insulted sitting here having the secretary yell at me. Uh, why? Is she less than you? Oh, you're not to sit here no. Oh, no, 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 no. I did no, not no. say that, Pat. Well, then what do you mean, Heaven? All right. You know, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we accept the minutes of yeah. September 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. do this next Sixth. Week. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make a motion we accept the minutes as submitted. Absolutely. Oh, okay. I'll second as that. As submitted by. As the lawyer, as lawyer read them. Absolutely. As lawyer read them. Wrote them. All in favor. I'll second that. Aye. I'm opposed. Okay. Amen. One, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Okay. Minutes accepted. I did a lot of work as a town trustee prior to sitting with this particular board, more than just minutes. That's and, and that's nobody an is challenging that. Just said I it. said it. You just said it. I said it. You just said it. An awful lot board, of time has been spent. A lot of right. time was spent on rewriting minutes on your board. No, it wasn't. It's very clear. No. Yes, there it is. No. no. Anyway. My concern here is just that we have the consistent minutes in the same voice. Financial. Lori has her own writing style, and I, and I want the Financial's minutes done. to be in her writing style. Oh, no. voice. Financial no. report. We still have um, financial report, and it's from the month, December 30. Has anybody had a chance to look at them? I have not. Okay. You table them? Yeah, we table. table them. Okay. Well, and, I think we need a clear head to look at we it. Discussed the we already approved Barley's request. Report of the clerk. Did we, did we accept the financial report? No, we, we tabled, tabled it. it. Oh. And then report the clerk. Okay, I don't know if anybody um, read the letter from John Aldred about the Georgia Capon projects. No, but he's, 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 
No, I didn't. He's offered some additional information that we could refer to. Okay. I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Is that an email okay. format you could? Is that an email? Sure. Yeah. Can we redistribute that to the numbers? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Um, meetings that we have coming up, October 9th. Um, it's a holiday. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us about something. No, yeah, that's all right. we don't have to really address this now, but we Did have to address October it at some time. What's October 9th? <laughs> Columbus Day. What's no, I mean, it's just on a October schedule. October 9th is Columbus Day. We have a meeting schedule. Well, scheduled it's meetings, one of them Day. conflicts with a holiday in October. Up it to the following Monday, right? Yeah, that seems fine. And then we have... Um, it's plenty for clam contest time. No, it's actually when the clam contest would... And Christmas Day, we can deal with that later. So the, October 9th will go to the following Monday. I mean, that's what we've been doing. But, this know, is like January the 16th. Yeah, no, it's just it's come up. I guess you might as well deal with it. Get ahead yeah. of it. Just <laughs> handheld computers for pump out boat operators. Yes, um, I had an opportunity to do some research on another project and um, came upon these uh, what they call a handheld computer. That's a very rugged case. It's like a uh, smartphone with a powerful computer and operating system built in, and they can be dropped from four or five feet, they bounce off the ground, and a lot of organizations are using them for record keeping purposes. So I thought it might be something we want to talk about. Uh, I believe I sent around an email to everyone. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to look at it yet. I, know, I, did, I didn't notice it. If you did, I'd yeah, I'll send it around again to everyone. But I'd like to start talking you know, with everyone about this, possibly for the pump out boats, because as they do their work, they could actually record the pump data. It. And at the, the end of the day, right. they can transmit it back to the office. I think it would be a good nice, thing. Yeah, cause nice recording. You just up with all the data more accurate. Once. So it's something I'd like keep to it, talk about more than the next have a daily, Well, Ty you have Tyler a daily. was doing the I like the idea. No, does it yes, do anything it. else besides, uh, like... Just you can also do their timekeeping. They could punch they, in we, when they start we, we the day, when they go to lunch. But what they're doing is they're running. So it can also be used for time. So they can go online. You can so look up info like if you want to. Look up the track weather track info or something. It's very powerful. powerful. That's good. Can you be able yeah, to do yeah. yeah. All these things are weekly reports. Yeah, it's new, reports, new technology. Like so well, how many hours did you spend totaling these up? Oh boy, I don't know. A while. I mean, oh, you totaled the pump out boat up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, I did that. Just about done. I've right. done that in years past, several times. Yeah. 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 She, in addition this is, to this the minutes. This is a better way. In addition to the minutes, you have. I'm sure. I know. So you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never implied know? that you didn't get anything done in the last place. But uh, do you have any idea how many hours you put into a Tyler in terms of you, what do you do? Three miles? I don't know. Twenty hours for three mile, and maybe it was Probably twenty for fifteen or something like that for Montauk. Yeah. So more for Montauk. You know, it could. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. So, so this will just download it directly to the computer. Yeah, they could have like a little Excel file on there that they punch them in, and then it, we could, it would go to the office. probably not cheap. Instantly add them up. So. But, but helpful. But in, I think if it's 20 hours for each harbor, you know, it's... Are they waterproof? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yep, and they have accessory cases that give you an extra... These can be used action. for communications and photography and stuff too, right? Yep. Yeah, if they had an issue, they could capture... Oh, it like there it is right there. So there's a lot of yeah, value with photos. these. Yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah. So what do they go for? Around a thousand dollars with the waterproof housing and okay. the charge. There we are. And maybe we could get that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm not sure. Right. I'll this, check for this you. might be something we could look into if something we could get the account. grant too. Yep. And it's maybe, a record uh, keeping. You know, mm -hmm. maybe the organization who it'll keep really good record. The pump out boats well, can help. Well, What's her name? She was a really nice woman from the yeah. um, I'm look into that a little bit more. And she might be so interested. I'd like to talk about this a little more. This could be something we yeah. might be able to do. We submit the email to everyone. There's maintenance. In different harbors. But this way you could put. Okay, and then um, committee assignments for, for this year. We've made some some changes because of the change in the um, deputy clerk. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's not here. We'll put them in your boxes. Um, but it doesn't affect you. It affects Rick, Pat, Bill. Okay. 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 Um, 
Brian Burns is now going to be on the Ponds Committee with Jim Grimes, and Rick is going to be the deputy clerk on that one. Um, Bill's now going to go down to Napig Lazy Point. Yeah, so I'm going to move from Tim, move away from Jim, the and Pat. <coughs> okay. And then okay, the others were just switching positions between these two. Well, give me a clue. I'm excited. Well, the ones that you were involved with before, you're. Okay, I, I have it on. You have it in here? Okay. Right. I'll look it up when I get there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, correspondence is a letter from the Trails Preservation Society. Um, what is that about? Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you for, for um, our donation in memory of Janice. Um, Conic Estuary Program, Technical Advisory Committee, Natural Resources Subcommittee meeting. Um, Wednesday, February 15th. Uh, well, it's kind of estuary? Yep. We, we should get somebody to start doing something with them, I guess. It's just so hard to find It's time a to trip get, to Riverhead. To get to their meetings and go to Riverhead and, yeah. and, and just the time communicating with them and working on that. But they are developing this restoration plan, and I suppose if we had habitat restoration ideas mm -hmm. or projects we're working, I guess they're trying to get an inventory of all restoration projects happening in the Peconic Estuary? Their meeting, the they meetings like are at 10 a.m. to 12.30. I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. <laughs> right now. It's like, um, yeah, we could, could we get, I mean, I'm a big fan of them, their work. Could we have them send us uh, the minutes of those meetings? I've had a ton of morning, be helpful. That might work. Yeah, yeah. maybe there's somewhere we can did. If we get a summary, if they could send us a summary of their meetings. He, he, uh, yeah, he, we did get an email from them, you know, giving us kind of a yeah, summary of the last If we get the, the agenda and the minutes, it would probably be very helpful. I looked in their email. One of the attachments is a form that we can use to uh, let them know any restoration projects that we have going on so they can have them in their inventory. That'd be good. So if we, if we want to, even the Fragmite projects, I don't know if that's really what something right. they want to know about, but yeah. perhaps you could kind of forward them more the more Georgia Capon sheet and let them know what's, yes. what's going on there. All right. We should get um, okay. computer work. Yeah, sounds good. Bay Keeper sent us a, a letter about cesspools and mosquitoes you guys can take a look at. Yeah, that was also against Methoprene, kind of an anti and then Methoprene letter. Bridget Fleming? One from Bridget about Methoprene. Bridget Fleming. Bridget did get some wording in the Methoprene plan, plan changed. Uh, to, to yeah, yeah, some of the, so she, you know, she's our county legislator and she, she, she votes for the plan or, or against it. She, and she voted for the plan because she got these amendments to the plan through, yeah. so then she had to vote for them. She's the one that, that but she's enabled on us to get that, uh, get the, get back to control get to the not spray that one area. area. Yeah. Right. It's just like a tiny, tiny, tiny little <laughs> pinky under the tent. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody have anything else? Uh, I have one more little thing that I wanted to bring up and I forgot to prepare for, but on Nature Preserve Committee last week, we had an issue with a property on Oyster Shores. Rick, maybe you remember more of the details, the, the property that wants to keep that dock they have. Mm -hmm. there, there's a property the town's buying and they're gonna tear down the existing house um, and I guess just renaturalize it, but the people in the community are interested in keeping a, da a dock that's attached to the property intact and it's- Is it a trustee permitted? Structure. I haven't looked into the, the if we have a it's permit for it. I, I believe so. Who would own it, yes, though? It yeah, yeah. Who would own it and be the, liable? The town would own the dock. Okay. Now, first of all, whether or not this is actually going to happen, it seems a little dubious. I have not okay. seen the dock. Yeah. My understanding is not it's, it's in, not in very good shape. It's in, uh, I saw a picture of the dock. It's in yeah, bad disrepair. Uh, Pilings are fine. You know, so the, the association, the hemp, and just you know, for the record, I represent the Hampton Warriors Association. <laughs> They've asked the town to consider, or they want, I guess, the Nature Preserve consider, con Committee to consider after the town buys the property in any management plan of keeping the dock. That doesn't mean the association necessarily has decided that they want the state to keep the dock. And even if they do, the town might decide the dock is not worth But should the dock stay, it would be owned by the town. Okay. Yeah, your bottom land, but it's all be a town dock. Uh, yeah, I'm on Nature Preserve. Don't they already something I'll, I'll deal with in the next doesn't, doesn't the association already have a dock? Good. The Hampton Waters Association Sorry. does have a 
bulkhead sort of dock over on one of their reserved areas over on, you know, the, sort of the channel over on the east side. That's of one on the, the, the channel, on the west side yeah. of the channel. This yeah, this one's not obviously a dock, it's just retained would not be limited to the association. Old wooden dock. Okay, so it would be it's public. It would be yeah, public okay. and public dock. This goes into Thermal Harbor. It could be good for uh, kayaks and yeah. such yeah. launching. Could be. Okay. Whatever. You're right. But if it's kayaks, in bad shape, or they know, gonna expect us yeah, to yeah, but then, do no. all, maybe all the, new dock. Maybe the town can get a permit from the it's, trustees you know, to it's, fix it. It's not it, far right? enough along to really discuss. <laughs> I think I just wanted to put it on the radar so we know because it came up at the Nature Observe Committee meeting, and I usually report on those things to us that involve the trustees. So. But it's it's a trustee permitted dock. Yes. Yeah, of course, so. Yes. I believe yeah. Lori had, had it is a trustee permitted dock. It is. And we do have other docks that the town owns. Okay. Right. That are inventoried and, and um, they're recognized, but they're. Does the town pass a dock fee? <laughs> no, we, we municipal we, it, technically municipal docks I could see. be charged a fee, but we always yeah that's don't fair. charge. Of course. Them. I guess the question is, if the dock were to stay, would you get any money from it? <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And who does the repairs? That would be the yeah. town. Yeah. It's a right. town dock. But we're going to yes. town dock. We do. They'd we have do. to accept that and any liability, I mean, but you know, the town. we have docks in. So, okay, that's covered under their policy, I think. Okay, yeah, right. insight. Yeah, Appreciate it. Can I, anybody have anything else? Can I have a motion to close? <laughs> motion to close. Second. 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 Favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.